What is going on, you guys? It is Dollar Cost Crypto here with the two hottest Mexicans in the game. No, you're right. <laughs> Mexican number two. What's up, man? Black eyes. What's up? What's up? What's up? What are they I speak no Spanish. I was listening. This was, guy. Bro, I was re-listening to our stream, and I was just dying on the road over here because I was like, holy shit, we literally went into this whole tirade of, of like people confusing you for being Latino. Dude, every, I get messages every day in Spanish. I got to hand them to my girlfriend to translate. Yeah. She's like, oh, what he's, he said, no, he, she'll say, she'll say one say, oh, he, he said this. I said, you got that out of 10, 10 paragraphs in Spanish? <laughs> Black guys, everybody. Oh, yeah. Hey, I, I think you get an applause feature. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Dude, this one's heavy. There we go, oh, man. Right can I set this up? Yeah, you can. No? Oh, well, lay it down. All yeah. right. All right, man. But be very careful with that, man. That's like one snap and like half, half the thoughts in uh, Instagram <laughs> will disappear. <laughs> Yeah, we and, what, that. and what will we have to talk about? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing at Nothing. all. But hey, man, thank you, th thank you guys so much for joining me, man. This is uh, this is Black Ice. Uh, he is a serial entrepreneur. There you go. Serial entrepreneur, like a corporate recruiter, and as well as a man that's been talking a lot about men and women and money uh, as well. You know, and a lot of the stream that we're going to talk about, we're talking about leveling up. And uh, I'll talk a little crypto in there as well. Down bad, you guys. Hex is down. Oof. Oof. One penny down, you guys. Two, two, two months ago, we were at one point eight cents. Today, we're at forty. Uh, what four point four cents and stuff? We're down bad right now. But uh, shout out to you guys, man. How, how many millions have you lost? <laughs> but you know what? I mean, I've legitimately, <coughs> if I'm being honest, <coughs> I've lost me. like in the last bear market. I I have lost about. I mean, it's what is it, like mid eight figures. But it'll it'll turn around. Oh yeah, it'll turn around. But it's paper. You know, it's, a lot of it's like pay, like it's like paper gains. It's like a lot of people who have money locked up in stock options and things like right, that. Right. Yeah. It's like you were never you were never going to be able to sell it anyway. You know, it's it's, it's it wasn't going to. But it was like for a bit there. I mean, it was incredible just waking up and it's just like you're just up tens of millions and you're just like Jesus Christ. That's crazy. It's super nice, man. It's, this is what I tell people that every bull market or every cycle and this doesn't matter like when things are really revving hard in the market whether it doesn't matter if you're landscaping if you have a corporate recruiting business it doesn't matter what you're doing when the economy is strong you have this period in time where you start touching this money you've never touched before. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you just like maybe you go from like you're making four thousand dollars a month, you start touching twelve. You start having those twelve thousand dollar months, and you were those twenty four thousand dollars a month, or those fifty thousand dollar months, and then you're like, damn, I've hit, I've hit some, and, th- and this is what I call like you, 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 you see, you see Mount Olympus, for a little bit. You look over and you're like, you taste the ambrosia for a bit. You know it's possible. <laughs> it doesn't last forever. It almost never lasts forever. You, it, typically, what happens is you hit, you touch that level, divide it in half, and that's where you're chilling. For a while, I got it, and then from there you go back up and stuff. I wow. mean, you know, have, what, what, where? Because I know you're a really successful guy. You've been working really hard and stuff. I mean, you've been getting. I mean, can you explain a little bit about your background? Yeah, so my my background is basically in the tech space, technical recruiting um, as a consultant. So a lot of startups they give VC funded money. They'll come to me and say, "Hey, here's our budget. We we just raised five point five million dollars, yeah. and through Series A uh, round of funding, and we need to hire fifty engineers. Is it possible? How much will how much will it cost? How long will it take us to get there? What type? What are the salaries going to be? What's the budget? What are you going to charge? X Y Z. So I've been doing that over two decades. That's kind of where my specialty was. Right. Um, and then I got into investing in little startups here and there. Dabbled in the crypto, but didn't understand it. So I probably lost a lot more money than I made. That's what I got you for. Yeah, right? that's what you so. got me for, man. It, no more down, ba- down bad days are gone. Right, and, and then from there, I just, you know, I started talking to a lot of people that, I don't want to say that didn't have game, but a lot of people in the tech space don't have game. Oh, that's facts. They don't have game. I mean, you know, Mark Zuckerberg has game because he has money. Right, right. But Money look at game. the guy. Look at the guy. He was he's in a great. He's successful. Great. But he's sleeping on a mattress in an apartment. Great. Yeah. Let's say he didn't have that money. Let's say he wasn't that successful. Mark would not be going out with the hottest chicks, if you if you will. I know he's married now. I think yeah. he got a girlfriend. Whatever. My point is, is these guys. I grew up on the other side where I had to work my way through the the minutia. Mm. Right. I've dated a lot of girls. I've been married before. I've I've done that. I've been around a while. Right. And so a lot of women now that are twenty five talking about all these. Oh, you know. I can't find a good man. I can't do this. There, when I was 25, those women are 50 now. I heard the same song and dance. And now I know where they're at. And so when I go back to these 25-year-olds and say, oh, you know, I can't find a good man. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make my own money. You're going to end up where these 50-year-olds are now, miserable and alone. And so I got into consulting with people on dating and relationships because I saw the need, especially from successful men right. or men trying to come up the ladder. And so I kind of got away from the tech industry and I got focused on talking to men, yeah. you know, helping men, helping women. I mean, it, it sounds like, I mean, damn, if you had some daughters, bro, like, you, you'd, they'd be based. Basically. Yeah, I do. I have one. She's oh, really? a straight-A oh, oh. student, and, and, you know, she's successful but uh, in school anyways. But uh, she's, you know, probably going to go to college. But she also knows, you know, here's the trade-offs, right? You want to be really successful in corporate America? You might end up miserable and alone. Or do you want a good husband? Which way do you want to go? You can't have both. It doesn't right. happen. It doesn't exist. So, you know, but she's a good, good girl in school and doing great, great, you know, AB student. Yeah. What I've typically seen, <clears throat> it's usually when, when uh, this is a thing like, now, I'm only speaking of the little experience I have, just the, just the adults I've seen in my life and stuff just do this. It's kind of like, you, you've heard of empty nesters. Syndrome, yes. Right? Yes. Right? Yes. The, ki- the kids are out, they're all in college or they all, you know, gone married and everything. All right? right. Usually happens when you're like, let's just say you have your kids when you're in your, um, I don't know. I guess back then everyone was having from 18 to like 25. Now it's probably like 25 to 40 right now when everyone's having their kids, right? So like every so the, when they're when the adults are like 55 or so and the kids are you know out you know out you know out of the house and stuff, that's when I found that a lot of people were able to make a pretty successful business. Yeah, yeah, because they're not so busy raising their kids. But the empty nest isn't empty anymore. Yeah, because of the economy, the cost of living. Mm. Right. Think about it. Speak on that. How much? How when I was when I got out of the service. I think it was in my late 20s, right? And I had to survive, man. My apartment, I think, was $700 a month. Two bedroom back then, right? <clears throat> and I was out selling freaking mobile phones, right? I had to sell cellular phones. That was my deal. And I, I literally had no money. I was broke as a joke. Couldn't rub two pennies together. Damn. And I, you know what I did on the weekends? I went door to door drilling peepholes in people's front doors for $25. Whoa, What? Yeah, I had nobody to rely on. Yeah. And so I had to pay pay rent. And one day I was sitting in my, oh, this is a true story, I was sitting in my apartment. And I was like, how do I make a lot of money in the tech industry? Because right. computers were the thing. I didn't want to go to college and learn how to write code. I couldn't own a business, didn't know nothing about it. I wasn't, you know, Michael Dell. I couldn't figure it out. Yeah. So I wrote on a whiteboard, how do I get involved in this industry? And I figured out how to be a middleman. 
There's right. people that needed jobs and there's there's companies that needed people. So I went, this true story, I went door to door out in the city of Bellevue, which is the east side of Seattle, with my cheap little hundred dollar suit, and I had a resume. And I went to all the technical recruiting agencies, didn't know squat about nothing. Right? I had a Commodore 64. You probably don't even Sheesh. know what that is. Right? I know how I don't write write basic language yeah. code, right? And I got a job. And I just said door to door. I said, look, somebody's going to hire me. It might not be you, but it'll be the next guy. This little boutique agency called Data Partners hired me. And I was recruiting and I was finding software engineers for Boeing. You know Boeing? No, I'm sorry. No, sorry. <laughs> right? <laughs> People who make those little airplanes, big yeah. airplanes, and, and medical centers. And then after 18 months, I saw Jerry Maguire. I was like, I'm taking the goldfish. I'm on my own. I had 300 bucks yeah. between me and two other guys. And we started an agency in 97. And our first year, we generated a million in revenue as a company, gross revenue. Gross revenue, yeah. But my point was help, helping people level up or talking about people leveling up. I know we're going to talk about that. I saw I'm going into it now. No, no, please, please. <clears throat> Man, I had nobody to fall back on. Yeah. I come from the other side of the tracks, right? I don't come from a rich, lower, lower middle class family, lower yeah. middle class. Which is most Americans. And, and, yeah. and it was like, man, I have rent due. Yeah. People are talking about, oh, man, I can't pay bills. You can go right down the strip right now and sell Red Bull and, and, and water for $3 Red Bull for 5 bucks out of a cooler on the strip and make $1,000 a weekend. You can, make, you, can make, you can make the average income a year, which is $42,000 a year on the strip if you want to work just the weekends. But you got to want it. You got to want it. And people were talking about, oh, I need help. You need help. Right now, the cost of living is high, right? Yeah. So the younger adults right now have been sheltered. They've been pampered. Their parents have, have, have drawn the shell around them and said, hey, it's okay. Here's, here's your participation trophy and pat them on the back. Right. You got to figure it out. And so I had no choice. It was either the streets or I figured it out. Right. And so I got in the technical recruiting industry, and I started putting two to two together. It's like, wait a minute. I'm doing 99% of the work, and I get 20% of the effort. And I left. I took my one client, Provident, Providence Medical Center. We owned that account, and we placed software engineers, network engineers on contract. We had margins. Right. And then from that day on, I've still been doing the same thing, but on a different level. Right. Where I've hit my head, now I'm at the, the, the top 1% of my industry, and it's like, okay, I'm not passionate like I was. I still, I'm good at it, but now I want to put my efforts into uh, manifesting and helping other individuals level up, help them with the relationships, do what I've seen done, and be a part of that, right? If I can, if I can inspire a young man that's 18 to 35 years old, I call that young, Yeah. okay? And I can help them with a relationship. I can help them with their finances. I can help them be successful in business and life, right? Cash before the ass. That's my mantra, right? <laughs> so many guys are like, how do we meet a hot chick? It's like, why don't you focus on yourself and money? Yeah. Why don't you build a foundation? You can't build a house on bamboo. It has to be on what? Cement and concrete, right? right. And so my focus right now is if I can inspire just one person listening to this podcast and they go, well, wait a minute. Miguel is going to help me with my investment. This guy's going to help me with relationships, yeah. right? The do's and don'ts. <clears throat> and if I can do that in five years, that guy in five years is going to be a millionaire, more than likely. He's going to be successful. He's going to have options to pick and choose from. That's right. And, and, it's, and that, that inspires me, right? But I know a guy like me that came from nothing to something, I can teach other people how to do that. That makes sense. No, that makes total sense and stuff. And then you know, this th there's a there's a really interesting video that I was uh, I, I heard overheard over the weekend that was about this whole thing about getting success too fast, right? And I mean, you you've heard the story about all the people would, would, would win the lotto and they just go broke within a couple of years, right? Sure. And uh, one of the big reasons why um, people typically it, it's it's mostly because they feel like they don't deserve the money or they feel like they've done nothing for it or they don't have the skills to just um, it's not maintaining it. It's just like they feel like they can't get it back or like they don't invest it properly, right? The the big the big the it, here, here from what this is one of the best explanations I've ever heard about it was basically this that because they, they don't they haven't helped enough people <clears throat> on their way there. That they feel like they don't deserve it in, subconsciously. Well, and they spend it. 
Right? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. There's they spend there's like this, but it's but it's sort of this self destructive sort of nature they have, where like people like I've noticed this and stuff. And like we, we joke around this on Fresh and Fit, and we joke around this about that that like the strip clubs are missing the big the crypto millionaires right now, the clubs and stuff because these a lot of people who got the money really quick. And this is in every industry. Don't like this isn't just crypto specific. It could be during the tech boom or the housing boom right, when people got the money and when people got the fucking money fast, they were spending it fast because deep down they felt like they didn't deserve it. They were giving it back. It was it's very it's a very weird psychological thing that happens with people is that they get they get it really quickly, and I they almost feel like you can you imagine like you're the asshole you're selling bullshit you know you're selling bullshit to like the, this is something that really pissed me off on the last uh, financial de- uh, crisis was HBC. Now you guys, please, now, this is not me saying this. This is a bank, okay? <laughs> I'm a private. Hey, this well, is a, well this, people like to kill the messenger, don't they? Yeah, they forget like, they're the messenger. Yeah, yeah, please, please do not say this. Right? This is this is don't kill the messenger here. But they were saying this about like so HBC and a bunch of these other big banks were targeting elderly black people, mm. and to give them these horrible horrible loans. And they were like these mud people. So will sign anything you put in front of them. They said that. They said that, and they got sued and lost. Can you believe that shit? Wow. And, and those same people. Can you imagine the people who are doing who are facilitating not just the bank, the people who are facilitating that. They. What do you think they were fucking off the money? They knew they're pieces of shit. Mm. Mm. I mean, can you imagine? You're like you, you're like you're doing that. You're, you don't. You've got somehow so subconsciously. You man, don't. You don't feel good about yourself. Man, you know, it's interesting. We're going on that road, being half black. Yeah. It, 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 a lot of the black people that I see that become victims of stuff like that are fatherless, mm. because there's nobody to teach. Nobody taught me how to balance it. You, you're yeah. gonna laugh. We don't balance checkbooks. We go anymore. online. Yeah. We don't do that. But anymore. we had checkbooks, right? Yeah. I didn't know what. I, I didn't. Nobody taught me. Nobody taught me about credit. My first credit card I got, I never paid back. I got I had fifteen hundred bucks. I blew it on stuff, Sheesh. and I, and I, it was when I was young, and I and I it went to this is years ago, right? It's not on my report anymore, but it, credit and collections and all that stuff. The point is, is there's no men in their lives to guide them and teach them the do's and don'ts. Yeah, fatherless homes, man. That's part of the and and, and not just in the black community. A lot of a lot of communities now. And that's the biggest problem we see, right? I'm going to go off and raise my kids myself, the lady will say, and I'm going to raise my son how to be a good man. You can't raise him to be a good man. You don't know how to. That's the man's job. Yeah. And so in these black communities, I can buy a house. Literally. I remember my first house. I qualified for my first house. I think my interest rate was 9%. Woo. Right? This is yeah. back in uh, 99. Yep. Yep. And it was like, wow, I got a house. I didn't know any better. Nobody was there to guide me. Yeah. Right? And then, the, and then what happened? In 2000, boom, the first collapse happened, 2001, Yeah. right? I sold my house for the property tax I owed on it, and I wow. walked away zero, Yeah. right? Lucky. 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 Right? Yeah. But you see what I'm saying? No, if there's no teacher, if there's no mentor, just like crypto, if I just take my money and I, I watch the news and say, wow, XRP, what's this? Yeah. I, say, I think it's going to make money. I throw $20,000 into it. And then I get around a guy like you, and I'm not saying that particular yeah, crypto. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, black guys, what are you doing? Well, nobody told me. I thought it was a good deal. Yeah. And so when I got qualified for my first home, oh, my God, my first home. And it was, it was a shitbox home. Right. Right? It was, it was a remodel or teardown, if you yeah, will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fixer upper. Yeah. Fixer upper. But it was my first house. And, you know, here's the funny thing. I paid like 266 for it. Okay. I think I sold it for 299 there's a, now the house on there on that property is worth about 3.7 million. They had a pepe on that. God damn. Right? Wait, 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 wait. So, you, wait, so, you, so you're telling me two hundred and ninety thousand to three point one million? Yeah, because it's in a place called Kirkland, Washington, which is the Marina Del Rey of the East Side, right? And wow. and it was it was right off of 
right off of the 80, Northeast 85th Street exit off of 6, right behind the big old tire shop. People know yeah. where that is. And it was this old house built in the 40s, right? It was post and pier. It wasn't mm. even a solid foundation. But they had a big property. Yeah. It had like 13. Big, big, big lot. Big, big lot, 13,000 square yeah. foot lot, which is big. <clears throat> and a grandfathered in a garage, right? And, and this the, was in 1999. 99. Okay. Now... Um, I could even probably uh, 607. Uh, I could probably, I don't remember the address, but Zillow it. Well, it was Zillow it, right? <laughs> uh, and and, and it, the, the house, I think, is 3.7 million, but they built a brand new house there. The point was, I had no money to, to get the property tax caught up or pay the mortgage. It was a recession because of the 2001, yeah. right? 9 11, mm -hmm. all that stuff. And you know, I didn't have like when you say high value men, we talk about high value men, people say, oh, it's just money. No, it's your, it's your, Circle of influence and association. Yeah. Like if, if, for example, right now, if I had a mortgage payment, I think, I swear to God, I think my mortgage payment was 1500 bucks. And that was a 9%. And that was a 9%. And if I, right now, if I said, hey, McGill, look, I'm about to lose my house. Yeah. Here it is. You know it's going to be worth a lot of money. It's right down on the strip. It's 299000 I need to. I need to somehow figure a way to uh, get the money and, and as an investors and then, and then we'll sell the house. Yeah. I could probably go to some people in my circle of influence right now, for sure, 100%, to have the money. Your, so, your so, net worth, I mean, your network is your net worth. Right. And yeah. back then, I, I didn't know anybody. Yeah. I was just a worker bee, nine to five, right? I had sold my company in 99 because we're going through a recession. Right. And I'm out working for, for and the that's your And that's the original company that you and your buddy started. Right. right. I right. sold 33%. Okay. Because there was two of them, right? And a small five figures, but I was I was I was drowning because everybody yeah. we're going in our, our my first recession ever. There was two thousand one, two thousand eight, and now right now, yeah. right? I've been through three. three, three of them, you guys. Three. The, the, this is and like they ha they will keep happening. They happen like it's supposed to be what every 10, 15 years, yeah. right? So 10, fifteen years, it happens, people yeah. don't see that. Yeah, and I've I've been through two of them. The first one, tech nope. boom, tech yeah. bust. Yeah, the doc. Yeah, the first one, no kid. Actually. Yeah, there was one in the 90s, but no, I was, was off one in Mexico military. somewhere. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the first one, I had no kids. The second one, I had kids. That was probably the worst 08. Yeah. That was horrible. I mean, I right. was out, you know, trying to do everything that, that almost didn't violate God's and man's laws to make money, right? Bro, bro, you know how bad it was at that time? I mean, I just got in out of high school around that time. I was working literally, like, for free in my dad's business. Like, just because, like, we, we, we couldn't afford, like, we were just trying to like, not lose the house. Yeah. And we, like, it was so, it, that was, like, some of the hardest living. I didn't even notice it. Was, like, I noticed, like, it was, it was crazy. One night, I just kind of went to my mom. I was like, why are we eating, be like, I know this is so stereotypical, but, like, why are we just eating beans every night? Like, I, right. I never noticed. I just, for me, it was just whatever my mom served, we ate, right? Yeah, yeah. Working all day in the sun and stuff, like, straight up Mexican, Mexican. Well, what, and, you, what, what were you doing, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, well, landscape. So, my dad had a construction landscape business. Oh, right. And I, like, my dad just threw me in the landscape business because basically um, things got so bad that the workers were just robbing my dad. Like, we're robbing them blind, just telling out. Like, basically doing a lot of fuck shit, basically. Doing, doing uh, side deals. Side deals. Stealing the clients. Client, yep, all that stuff. Oh, and my God. So they threw me in there. I stopped the leak. But like I like there was no money there was no money until we kind of built it back up and stuff so I mean I was just like working for fucking no I remember I was working for nothing for about a year <laughs> then from there they were paying me like five dollars an hour when the minimum wage was like ten dollars oh bro you know shit like oh. but, it, but it's family you know it's you know? family yeah you're, 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 yeah I yeah mean, and I was just happy they gave me any money at all and then from there like with that cash I mean I just spent it on fucking alcohol of course right, right. but right. yeah but but now now we're going through another one right right and and now it's like okay you're much wiser and smarter you've been through it my point is going back to that. There was no guidance. Yeah. Nobody guided me to this day. You know, I've had mentors, right? I go, there's people I can call and say, hey, uh, this is, uh, you know, Obi-Wan, you're our last hope, right? Yeah. This is the 911 call. Um, and what do you think I should do? And they give me advice. But these are people that are at a level I want to get to in a re relationship and business and money and right. investments and net worth. Like, so for you're my guy for crypto. Yeah. I'm not going to call Joe Schmo that, you know, my neighbor. Oh, I invested all this no, let, let me talk to Miguel. Yeah. He knows his shit, right? Shout out to Charlie, too. <laughs> uh, Charlie. Yes, Charlie. Yeah. Let, let me hit a quick super chat real quick. We got KH saying, quick question, Miguel, a $10 super chat. Is there a chance for a bank run on Kraken, and should we not have funds there? You, like, let me say this. You should never have your funds in a third party ever. If you, if you can avoid it, you should always have your crypto within your, within your own wallet where you control the private keys. 
period. It's having control. Like the, the reason I like crypto so much is it gave, it gives you ultimate control of your money, but it's also ultimate responsibility. Is like, crack, Kraken overseas? No, no. Kraken's a, Kraken's a U.S. exchange. What's the, what's the one in China, the exchange that everybody was using so they could avoid taxes? Oh, it, originally last cycle was Binance. Then this time around. Uh, I'm not trying to get people to do that. Yeah, no, no, no. Just, it, just, it, well, the Binance one's closed. It's done. Right. right. Yeah, they've already, like that one's, that, that loophole's done. But um, from there, it would, uh, I don't know. I it, thought it was, it wasn't cracking. I can't remember the name of it. You're not thinking of FTX, are you? No, no, no. There was another one that people were doing offshore. Just Bit so they BitMEX, Bybit. I don't um, know. Bybit. Buy, I think it was, buy, no, yeah. was it Bybit? There was Bybit. There's a lot, there's, there's a lot of them and stuff. Like th there's a lot of exchanges out there and stuff. Um, MexQ. I mean, there's, there's a lot basically, but a lot of them are starting to shut down and stuff. Uh, just, this is what happens. You have a contraction and then you have an expansion out, right? Like, like one of the, one, like how this whole crypto crash started was because of this thing, this big hedge fund in the space called three arrows capital, mm -hmm. two smart, two really smart called Cal Davis and uh, Suzu. And basically they're because they were like the golden kids of the cycle. Like imagine like they came from crypto. They didn't come from like equities. They came from crypto, right. made a fund, just killed it for the last two cycles. This uh, cycles four years in crypto. So usually like all time high crash, then all then back up and like one recovery year, one all time high year, and then like two years of death okay. basically. So like two years up or like two and a half years up, one year and a half just straight death basically. And um, they made a lot of money, so they were like they were like triple A bonded. Like if they said if they said like they need a million, like where? It would, so basically what happened is the whole industry lent the money uncollateralized. They were like, oh, it's it, three hours capital is asking because they were like, fuck, give them the money and stuff like that. Because like, if everyone knows that, that we're giving them money, though everyone will want to work with us. So this whole thing with reputation-wise, their reputation was very high. Like Everybody like trusted them because they could come to you and just tell you some bullshit. Be like, bro, I need – so Coinbase, Kraken, right, Gemini, right, right, right. FTX. Do you still use Binance. Coinbase or recommend yeah, Coinbase? Yeah, I, I recommend Coinbase still. It, the, the, here's the main – look. Coinbase is technically, in terms of the United States, it's the oldest U.S. exchange. It's been around since 2013. I, I do trust it. It's the only one on the stock market right now. They have they still have plenty of cash. They have the ability to borrow money. So if they ever got themselves into a pinch, they, there's, okay. there's money there to at least enough time for us to get off the life raft. What was this whole celebrity crypto.com deal? What was that about? <laughs> I, I, you know, when I start seeing all these celebrities, I was like, you know yeah, what? That yeah. looks like somebody's going to lose a lot of money. Right. So, so there's two of them. There's the FTX one, uh -huh. which is woof bad, and then there's there's Crypto.com. Right. Okay. So those are the two the two kind of up and coming exchanges here in the states. Here in the states. Right. Now, Crypto.com is still kicking. They're still around. They're going to make it. Right. But the thing is, that with the the grift with them is they basically have you buy their coin, they have you stake it. So imagine like you have to take two thousand dollars of coins, stake it, and they give you a credit card. Or a, like a, 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 they give you a card that has benefits. It's almost like a credit card, debit card, where you can spend your own crypto on it. Right. But the catch is you have to kind of make a deposit of their own token. So basically, they were kind of running this whole thing of like you have to own some of their token in order to like hold it up, and this would cause their price of their token to do really well. Okay. And it's not a terrible model, personally, but it's just like it, it, it like during bull markets it does very well. During bear markets, very bad. Because what happens as soon as your two year unlock happens, you dump all your tokens. And then so that's why the token's not doing too hot right now. So 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 Coinbase is the way to go for Coin, for, for starting off. Yeah, I'd, I'd always rec the the three exchanges I've always recommended at least for this whole bear market had always been Coinbase, Kraken, Gemini. But it, Coinbase has always been like the main one. I've I've never really recommended don't, FTX. Don't they limit a, a certain amount of buy? Well, no, no. So on. Um, when I want to buy a coin through yeah, through through Coinbase or anything, it's usually about twenty five thousand dollars is where you get maxed out on a debit credit card sort of system. But if you direct wire them money, okay, then you can do like I mean I you know you can do one hundred fifty thousand. I mean that's the most I've done like a single wire, like okay, one hundred fifty thousand okay. bucks, no problem. The only thing is the money has to stay there for about like three three to seven days, and then you can take the coin off. Oh. So so what I've always recommended to my students is basically buy get it set up as many exchanges as you can, and just like. Basically, you treat them like like you're spinning girl, like you're spinning dates, like you're spinning plates. You right. Have as many options as possible. Use them. Then, as soon as the money's unlocked, take it off back into your custody because you, there's there's wallets like you need a MetaMask, a Trezor. So a you Legend. put it in your wallet. You put it in your wallet. I'll see. You yeah, show you, me this. You, I'll show you everything. Like you never want to. Le I'll, I'll get you in the next mindset course. But um, you never want to leave your funds on a wall uh, on on an exchange because if they go down, your funds are stuck there. So it's like you like imagine like you you're buying a ticket to the Titanic, right? 
You're buying this ticket to the Titanic. It's real nice. It's the the party's real nice. Right. right. But then you got you know like oh this shit's gonna sink. Wow. So as soon as you're allowed to get your coins off, you get on a lifeboat and you get off. And you, wow. That's what you have to do. The thing is, is people here like this is this is why people get hurt. They they try to use the same knowledge that they've used in the traditional space in the crypto space, and they're they're not the same. Mm. Whether I mean whether this this is actually good or not and stuff like that, there is some good protections that the traditional space does have. The 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 one thing in the traditional space is there's tons tons and tons of um, and I'm not talking about middlemen like like what you're doing. I'm talking about like counterparty risk and stuff. But when, right. when it comes to like these big exchanges, so with like uh, something like let's just say something like Robinhood went down, you'd be able to transfer your stock. They they didn't embezzle your stock. You'd be able to transfer it off to like E Trade or something like that, right? Got it. If something like right, you, so usually that doesn't happen with crypto because there, it's there isn't these protections as well as um the, there isn't as like there there needs to be some regulation. But the thing is that they're always going to go overboard on regulation. This is what crypto people are just so negative against regulation is because they're going to use it to like hatch it and hurt innovation in crypto. Um, because right now the United States is very behind on the in in the tech space when it comes to crypto. I mean, like scarily behind. Right, right. And it's just because they've been so draconian with these laws and stuff like that. They, like anyone can start a anyone can start a company, right? Like imagine imagine if it was illegal to start a crypto business. Imagine it was illegal to start a business here in the states. Where where we would where would the economy be? Right. So you'd have to illegally run a business. Right. All the time. It, it's that that's kind of where we're at in crypto in the United States. It's terrible. Like like imagine like so people are afraid to start anything here in the States. So that's why all the innovations happening either in Europe or in uh, Middle East mostly or in Asia. It's skipping the United States, but but tons of U.S. dollars investing into it because everyone knows like you're, this is where you're going to get rich. Wow, it's so it's so backwards, bro. Like like the S, the chair the chairman of the SEC, man, like that dude needs to get fucking fired. Um, and he's in big shit too because of the SEC. He took money. He also had he, like th there's tons of things with like Sam Bankman Fried. He was like, imagine this this guy like hates crypto, but he's like like literally rolling out the red carpet for like the FT the guy, Sam Bankman Fried from FTX. It's it's like it's a it's a soap drama, you guys. Like I'll like go on my YouTube channel, look look for FTX, and so I'll link it in the chat in a minute. But there, I do an entire stream. I did with Rollo Tomasi actually. Right. Me, Charlie, and Rollo Tomasi. We did a giant stream about what the whole debacle that was, like the FTX scandal, and it's so. Like, I had to stop. Like at two hours in, I had to like stop because I started getting into Hillary Clinton, like legitimately. Oh shit, like, bro! It got into the DNC. Like it was so deep. Like they were the like before Jordan. Watch this. It is not good if you're the second high. Like imagine, the only person that donated more money to the, the to the to the Biden administration was George Soros. Wow! Imagine you're on that level. Like you're like 140 million, and you got 200 million from George Soros. Imagine That's you're crazy. on you're That's on that crazy. level. That's crazy. It is. It is. It is in <clears throat> insane. The le like it got so. Like, and then on top of that, once you dug a little deeper, you find that that the the second there's this guy called Sam Tribuda. So so you got. Uh, so you had um, Sam Bankman Freed and you had Sam Tribuda, which is a second right. in command, which we believe to be there. That was actually the government agent put into FTX to Man. make sure shit was actually happening. Watch what he did. He was the second or first most uh, highest campaign contributor to the Republican Party. So, so, so they, they covered all their bases. So they, imagine $150 million to the, Repub to the Democrats, $100 million plus to the, to the Republicans. So they, they covered the bases on both sides of, of the parties and stuff in order to get – and what they were trying to pass was this giant sort of like inner sandbox game. So they were only going to allow three exchanges to, to benefit from the FTX, Coinbase, Kraken. And wow. maybe Gemini. They were they were they were going to exclude Binance and a couple other exchanges. So basically, these four exchanges were going to have like it was almost like we we're going like four points of the of the of the of the United States was going to be controlled by these four exchanges. And it was basically if you wanted to use crypto, you had to use them within their exchange. So they were they were going to have ultimate power over. Well, that's the US okay. Market. So so let, let's talk about that because we're going down this rabbit hole. Yeah. So when you get into socialism, their whole focus is is to spread the wealth equally. Right. Right. Okay, so so the the goal and so and it's never worked in any country in the history, right? So they're like, hey, equal equal income to everybody. They're trying to make this whole thing equal. Now they're going in the and communism is where everything uh, is that's uh, public is now owned by the government. Yeah. So is the government getting into owning these businesses? Is that what you're saying? No, the gov the government the government and Wall Street is getting into owning Bitcoin mining companies. 
and some crypto some crypto companies on the side so this is this th there's a lot of private thing like you, there's a lot of companies here that are obviously i mean basically are government agencies just because all the contracts right. they get so there's a lot of private buying but are of, they trying to make it illegal no i i think it's well past that we're not going to make crypto illegal for but, for for a public company to own no 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 they just patent so it, or a private company it, it, it's it's for it's 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 kind of hard for a a a you a, a, a person of the united states or a private resident of the united states to create a lot of businesses that has to do with tokens or stuff because like the whole industry the whole industry is about creating tokens or creating some like creating tokens or having some sort of revenue business and stuff but they're making that very difficult like well, when it touches crypto for some reason okay but but that's private right so public is the government the public yes. sector yes so if they're making it hard for the private sector to do that they want to control it and own it. That yes. becomes public. That that's what communism is about. Yeah. So, that's some commie shit. Yeah. So, socialism. The next step is what communism is. So that's why I'm saying not to go down the rabbit hole. But if you're saying I can't create a company that's built on tokens, but you have to own it, that's what it is. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, I'm. I mean, you gotta, gotta tell me, man. I'm, like, you gotta tell me, man. I'm like, I'm more libertarian than I'm Republican, but like, well, like, yeah, yeah. The, the whole the whole crypto space is basically libertarian. With I'm the, libertarian, the, but I vote conservative. Yeah, right? like, and the the whole industry is basically libertarian Republican, except now we're starting to get a little bit of like Wall Street money and crypto, so we're starting to get sort of this right. libertarian left, which it, which I, is weird, which is very weird, it, which is but like but and then the but the average person that comes in, they're, they even though they they, would, they may believe that they're libertarian or Republican, they're they're already they're like the boomers and the extras and stuff who are coming from the stock market. They're they're used to just like leaving like all their money on Coinbase. Yeah, which is like haram. <laughs> when I, when I, which is like I hear that shit and I fucking like what? Like, that's probably what I did. I don't know what I'm doing, right? <laughs> no, but I. But it's like that's why if you're going to do it anywhere, it's Coinbase is probably the best option. Okay, it got really, it. if got you're it. going to, like like if someone's doing less than five. 50, you know, we're talking about fifteen, twenty thousand less. You can leave money like that on Coinbase. It's fine, but over the long term, it's a terrible idea. You, right. But eventually, you want to level yourself up. That's why you join the Citadel, get the crypto mindset courses. We teach people how to like onboard the crypto. Actually, how to become crypto native. I gotta get my son on there, man. Dude, we'll get you. Don't don't even worry, man. Yeah, we're, he's got to level you up. He comes to me. I'm like, why are you talking to me about crypto? I have no idea. Talk to McGill, right? <laughs> and Charlie, right? Elon Musk, Ted Cruz, baby, <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> But uh, Gary Gensler, you're exaggerating. Motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, hit the like button, you son of a bitches. The Herc, right, uh, with the super chat right here. Hey, Miguel, don't, they call me Ted Cruz. don't you rate Binance? Oh, I, so I don't really use Binance, but there is like a Binance USA. I mean, I, ha, I think I have a Binance USA account, but I only, I only used it maybe like just to buy a little bit of Phantom, I think. That's about it. I um, think I had a Binance account one time. I don't even know yeah. what's in there. Yeah, you I mean you should probably check. You might have some money in there. You, like, this is what I'm saying. The longer you're in crypto, you end up having couch cushion money. Like, yeah, yeah. It, I, you know what? There's so many. I, I probably have seven wallets, different exchanges. I have no idea. You have to, dude. I what, could be worth 100 million right now. I wouldn't know it. Like, <laughs> you, you imagine you're the guy who bought four thousand dollars Shiba in, back in oh, the day. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. Son of a bitch. I'm, I'm, like, it's, it's like, it's like Forrest Gump. I'm sitting next to a millionaire. Hey, it's not worse than that poor bastard that threw his hard drive away. Remember that? It was oh, through the dump. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the, the wife threw it away. Oh. He got, that's the what that's what kills me. Like, there's tons of these things where like guys were mining Bitcoin early on and they they went in the service. A lot of them went into the service. They they uh, because, you know they, they probably weren't doing nothing with their lives. Sure, sure, sure. So it's like, like let me go four years, five years later, crypto's going bananas. The fucking wife threw the computer away. Let me do some spring cleaning. Whoops. That's crazy that they would throw that away though without asking the husband. Bro, women, dude. I mean, I don't, I'm not to tell you this. I mean, like, oh, I, 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 oh, here we go. I, I, told, I told this to my gods. I told this to my my godson, who is seven years old. My my uh, and my girlfriend's nephew, and so I, I told this to every every man child in in. It, I tell them this all the time. Women get women get mad when you're spending money because it, why, like, is you're spending their money. That's how mm. they think. Yeah, that's how they think. That's why. That's why it doesn't matter about a woman's money coming into a relationship because you're not going to get that money anyways. anyways yeah. I don't care about your money, yeah. right? She might she might buy you a dinner. She might buy you, but but it's inconsequential. You can't rely on it. No, it's no, there's no. no but they rely on you, and then this is why, yep. like, because they're like, how dare you spend resources that she's going to me, bitch? Right? Yeah, bitch. Like, man, how much money was? How much was that guy supposed to be worth? Oh my god, like, um, was it twenty million or something like that? No, no, no. It was more. It was like closer to 80. 80, oh 80 to sixty million, but. That, but I heard that story was old. That was a very old story. That story was in. I heard that in 2020. So I mean, I can I can only imagine that well, all time high. Like pff, it probably was a couple like low hundred million. 
at the but like the thing is it in their processing plant they actually would take the garbage and put like a plastic bag they would add a little bit of these um these enzymes and liquids on top of it on top of the trash and then covered in a plastic bag and what would happen it was a li would liquefy it it turned into natural gas so basically it had been in there such a long time that the, he was like i'll give you half the money to the city and stuff please let me get it and there's like i'm sorry man even if we wanted to open it there's ecological problems we would release all this fucking harmful gas into the air but two it's probably melted already wow so it was it's gone you know wow yeah i mean would you get divorced i mean it's well, like, yeah, well, maybe. I don't know. But I'm maybe. not in that one. <clears throat> yeah. But That's their conversation. That happens, but that happens a lot. And there's a lot of stories you don't hear. There's tons of stuff of just people doing spring cleaning, throwing the computer away. Like, bros, just don't throw computers away. <laughs> like, just don't. Just, but, like, this is why we talk. I talk. We talk so much. We almost do, like, damn near two webinars on this and stuff. So, like, damn near eight hours of talking about this, about password management. Don't use a password save. Don't say, like obviously for a little simple stuff like Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Like yeah, that's fine. Whatever. If you want to do that, don't don't ever, like. So when you create a wallet, they give you twelve words or twenty four words. Right. So it'll be like Apple, John, kill, Mary, fuck. Right. Your, your twelve words. Write them and everything's analog as hell. You want a black. You want a you want a black pen. Shout the black ice. <laughs> you want a black. <laughs> you want a black pen. You write down your twelve words in very large, like very easy, like because what'll happen sometimes is. It can smudge a little bit. You never. You, it happen. It has oh, happened. Man, I don't even remember my passwords, man. But no, but you write them down very, like clear, clear, like the O, and you know everything like that, right? Nice and clear letters. You space them out between. Don't squish them together. You space them out. You put them on a nice piece of paper or like a, a booklet or something like that. You write it out, and then you make two to three copies of it. And then from there, you, you put them in places where you can, um, just in case, you don't want to have, like, all your keys in one place. Because what happens if your house burns down? Or, like, the place you're putting it is a burn. You oh. want to have the contingencies. Well, you know what I, <laughs> it's funny you said that. Do you, know, do you know what Chase got rid of? What? Safety deposit boxes. Yeah. What's the deal with that? Okay. Well, part, so part of the safety deposit boxes have been kind of bullshit for a long Now, mo now. Take the I mean, you, you, uh, the reason I said that is yeah. because you got to put these passwords somewhere else. Yeah. Other than your house, your house gets on fire, you got a fireproof safe. Right. But a lot of people don't have a fireproof safe, right? Right. So, right. so I was like, oh, go to safety deposit. I told nope. somebody the other day, go to safety. They don't have safety deposit boxes anymore. Yeah. No one's, they still have them in some locations in California. I know they still they do. They said your grandfather didn't, you have it, you can keep it. But if yeah. you want to go get one now, it's a no go. Damn, I did not know that. So she, she, this friend, she, I got some family heirlooms, some wealth, some. Yeah, they, yeah. I said, go put them in a safety deposit box, right? She went to Chase. Chase says that you can't get one. Wow. Now that is stuff like stuff like that. That's I think that's a great idea. I think that. But here, here's the problem with private. Like, all right. So either you know, no matter what, let's just say you weren't getting in trouble or something. Like you know, God forbid, or just like some some somebody. There was some break of command there where someone was able to open up the boxes to look for a second. The the police the police department can actually open your safety deposit boxes now, they can. Wow. The government can open. So if, as soon as the government can do that, it's bullshit. Well, you it's don't. I, I mean, uh, I'm in a domain. Nobody owns their house. Right. So imagine this. The government. The, the, yeah. the government can do anything they want. So right. So right now, most people. Most people, if they found your private keys, right? Let's just say they they found your keys. They would think it's your twelve. They think it was it was like your six your six year old's fucking spelling homework. Oh yeah! <laughs> Seriously, like that's what they would think. Like if the uninitiated, the, the like this happened to Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast got his got broken. His house got broken into, and he had two million dollars of Bitcoin on his computer. He had his private keys on a sticky note right there. The robber robbed everything but the sticky note. He and, and Mr. Beast was like, "Oh fuck, fuck! I don't care whatever was in the house." But there was two million dollars on my laptop. The guy took the laptop, left the sticky note. The the, the two million dollars was there, and then he was like, "This guy's an idiot. He, he didn't even." Like this is how pe people. There's it's so early. Like only four percent of the global populations even owned any crypto at all. Like we only wow. we've only at the peak we had four percent <laughs> of the population in crypto. Right now we're that guy. You know, that guy's like, <laughs> let me make a second run at that dude's house. <laughs> See if he has a sticky note on there. Shout, shout out to Mr. Beast, man. Mr. Beast was like, bro, dude, bro, guy. you're a dumbass. <laughs> that guy, dude. He is. He's he owns YouTube. Yeah, hidden plain sight. He literally had like. Two million dollars of money of Bitcoin. Here's my seed face. Hey, and the guy was like, nah, pass. You know, it was funny. I saw him. I was playing poker at the win or the encore. Sorry, yeah, the yeah. encore. I'm playing poker, and there he is. You play craps? No, poker. Oh. <sighs> Okay. No, no, I, I don't understand craps, man. I mean, I'll be the guy saying. Let me crap. initiate you. Let me, let me uh, no, I don't know about that, man. It's like, hey, you just lost a thousand dollar crap. Oh, you win it back. No, but yeah. but I'm at the poker table. Yeah. Right. Te Texas hold them, right? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. No limit. I'm playing, and I look over, and 
he's playing in the high limit area. He's playing uh, God, what's his name? Tom Dwan. He's mm. playing Tom Dwan one on one, heads up, and they're playing in the poker room. Right. And I go, that's Mr. Beast. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know how much they were going back and forth, but yeah, I think yeah, it was. Yeah. I think he was up. Tom Dwan was up thirty three thousand. Yeah, yeah. Which is nothing for Mr. Beast. That's well, like whatever. That's nothing. Yeah. He he, he spends, makes that a second. He, he spends like four million dollars a video. That's crazy. Yeah. But he That's makes, great. but but like he he has a great like shout out to Mr. Beast. I think he's doing some really good things in the world. Like, can you believe this shit? He cured like a thousand people's blindness, and then people were in the in, like I try, saw, trying I to shit on him. For, like, he did a great thing. I heard that. But he was like, "You're exploding the poor." Well, they were going to be blind and poor, and exploded in his sight. Tell me which one. Well, you know what he did? He did also those videos in Spanish. Espanol. You need to do that. You need to create Co- a second Quentin, channel. So, hey. I'm on that. So here, well, hey, so see, I, 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 I'm, I, I get two percent, two percent, two percent, two percent. Final fee, <laughs> permanent, perpetual, passive revenue. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you should be doing it in Spanish too. We, we like are. So, so shout out to my boy Crypto Boogie. He's starting up. He's uh, so something that we always do in the, in the courses is we always tell people, hey, if you want to start a channel, it doesn't even have to be crypto. We always tell people, look. We're heading into like basically in order to really have success in the future. Like right now, you still can have an all you you always be able to do like a physical business, make some money, right? But it, but it, it's getting to the point now where you have to have a TV station. And what I mean by a TV station is you you own a TV station. I own it. We own, by our YouTube channels, our social medias. We are a brand social. We, we are a small TV station basically, right. right? And or network, right? And you need if you're gonna have a small business, you need a TV network. You need somewhere to like to have your ads, to talk yourself and everything. All right, like one of the safest things to do ever is like if you can't show yourself, what can you show? Right. right. So, so a lot of times, like what, why influencers get in trouble is because they're talking to products that they don't own at all, or they don't really trust, or they don't really vet. Like right, if, if like for you, right? Like if if I, if you I, if you told people like, hey, Miguel knows his crypto stuff, do his crypto course, right? You know me. That's that's a good product right. to shill. Oh yeah. But like imagine like you're like you're Tom Brady and you're like, yeah, join FTX. How fuck did he get on that? Right. Well, I, I, that's why I got my own product, my new new Tropics product that it came out. Yeah. I got the and I would take I got, it I I got the samples. Them. Yeah, right. The first samples came. I swear, you're gonna <laughs> laugh, right? Okay, okay. This is. I'm glad we're talking about this. So, working with this guy, partnering on it, fifty fifty. Yeah, yeah. He owns a manufacturer. He's doing everything. I said, look, you manufacture it, do distribution, boom, we'll, we'll work together, right? <clears throat> so, the first product comes out. I take it one pill. I lost like ten pounds of water. I'm sweating <laughs> to death. I'm like, dude, I'm not focused. Thermogenic? Or yeah, it was like a thermogenic. He goes, I goes, I don't know why. I only added X, Y, Z. I was like, look, put that product aside, patent that baby. We'll use that as a thermogenic to burn fat. Yeah. Right? Because they got rid of that other product that was on the shelves, uh, uh, the ephedrine, right? Oh, the ephedra. Ephedra, ephedra right? Ephedra. 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 Yeah, yeah. And and everybody like sued them and everything. So we found this by accident. We formulated this product that's a, a, a thermogenic. I swear, I was. I was. I went through three T-shirts. Wow! And one day, I was sweating, just sitting there. I'm like burning fat, burning fat. Went on a scale, lost weight. I was like, okay, that's not our new tropic. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, what happened to my business partner? And he sent me nine bottles. I said, why'd you send me the nine bottles? Right. So I got this thermogenic at home. The second one came out. I just got yesterday. I took it today. I was like this, just dialed and focused, right? So, so and it's all over the counter, right? Yeah. But but we 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 put all the ingredients in there, but the the, the calibrated it like you know proprietary blend, yeah. But yeah. we got the products in. There. So I'm I got nine bottles. I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna give you you know yeah. how, what do you think? Once everybody's like, it, it's really good. Not eh, I want to get really good. Then I'm gonna have him. We're gonna put our labels on it, yeah, and it's my product line, right? right Does right. that make sense? No, that makes sense. So, so I'm with you on that because uh, there's there's times I pulled out of deals with mm. partners because I didn't feel comfortable with the direction they were going. Right. I didn't want my name attached to it, right? In the past, where people have uh, merged companies or there was an acquisition, or hey, we want to do this, Dab, do you want to be a part of it? Uh, blah blah blah, and I'm like, eh. I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't trust that guy's judgment. And sure enough, you know, those guys went down the road of, of no return, and some of them went to prison. Right. So I'm like, phew, you got to go with your sense, right? Yeah, you got to trust your gut. Yeah. Right? And if I'm not taking – if I start taking it and I'm like, this is helping me, then people are like, okay, well, he's ta- – I watched him take it on the show. Okay, I'm going to take it. And it's a red pill. <laughs> it is red. <laughs> it's a red. Oh my god! <laughs> it's called it's called HV Alpha. Yeah, high value alpha. High right? value alpha. Okay. So HV Alpha, right? Black guy. So, anyways, uh, 
uh, we'll see how it works out. Once it gets going, then I got to create the site and blah, blah, blah. Let me try that thermogenic. I was like, bro, I've lost, dude, I lost, I lost 45 pounds with thermogenic. Hey, yeah, but I, I'm telling you, man, I was like, dude, why am I sweating so much? I thought it was, a, you know, turning, the, t- turning yeah. the thermostat down. It was, somebody said, well, it's kind of warm, but no, I was really sweating. Yeah. Like, literally, like, I had to change everything. Yeah. So, if that helps. Hey. And my heart rate didn't raise, so which was oh, weird. Oh, that's good. that's good. Yeah, because so, usually that ends up happening with those thermogenics or something, like because they add like very like a very weird blend of caffeine. I think we figured yeah. it out too. Yeah, exactly. Right, amp and and, and caffeine will do it. Yeah. yeah. So this is what I've been saying. So something we always tell our students that we tell them after, like we usually tell them, you know, once you take a couple of courses and you really get your feet, if you want to do crypto, you really got to get your feet wet, like really know right. what you're, before you start talking about it. But then start your channel up and stuff. You know, me and Charlie always go like, hey, yeah, we'll, we'll shout you out. We'll have you on the channel. We'll help you out and stuff to grow and stuff. But like. For for a lot of people, like I tell this to even my own brothers and stuff, if no one knows, like you have to start. Like I like I, I've helped so many bit, like not even knowing, like I've helped a lot of people, like online businesses. Like I know tons of guys who came to me from consultations, like they're trying to start an online business within a month. They're making like nine thousand, twelve thousand dollars a month. It's just because they don't know what to charge, they don't know what 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 to do. Like and, and the, here's the thing that's always hard with them. And like I was talking to you about this, you got to do live streams. Yeah, there. you have and it, it you have to do and it's just I know it's difficult for some people I, I will say this though sometimes I do believe like the uploaded video does get more views but you create community you create a better community with right, a live stream right right so, so I always believe having some make sure you can be one live stream a week there's nothing crazy and then having your videos out but just having something there because that camaraderie is really going to help you out sure. so you can create a brand because like you you wonder why like you have these people who blow up that I just got I've got 3 million subscribers they, and they go they, they have a meetup and there's like 10 people there Bro, right. if I had 3 million subscribers, I'd like, look, look, watch this. So the last time me and Charlie did a, a crypto mindset meetup, right? An in-person meetup and stuff, right? Um, our channel, I think my channel was like 10,000 subscribers. Uh, I think Charlie's was 15,000 or so. And we had like damn near 300 people show up. That's insane. Fly all over the country. This time around, this time around, right? I've got, I'm, I'm, I'm getting closer to 20 and stuff. Charlie's at 20, uh, I think 20 and some change, and we're doing, and we're doing this stuff now. I mean, like, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get like four to eight, maybe even a thousand people possibly. That's just the power of the reach, right? Imagine if I, had, if I have three million subscribers, bro, I could probably get like a hundred thousand people to show up. Or I can get something fifty thousand. Well, yeah, fill, I can fill in a fucking arena up. But but like not not all not all like the way some people build their business or the way they connect to their they don't really connect. It's just it's garbage views or right, it's, right. It's, it's it's well. There's always a, you know you talk about I was, I was talking with, with a, an engineer. Um, there's a problem, and then you talk discuss the problem, and then you, yeah. you you talk about a solution and how you can help them with a solution. Right. Right. Um, I see a lot of guys start out and just talk about themselves. Nobody wants it. Nobody gives a shit about it. like I have this I have this shirt that says nobody cares and on the back says put the work in. Right. But right. I also use it like nobody cares about nobody wants to like they want to hear your background initially. Right. OK. Yeah, yeah. But every time you get on a podcast, nobody wants to hear about your fucking cars all the time or, or what kind right. of money you got or are you, you unless you're a car channel. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Or you buy like that that car chick, the Barbie car chick. Oh, it's right, got like right. seven yeah. million. Like you watch, you're like, wow, she's a, she's in this new space car that, that uh, hydrogen. Yeah. I, I just saw it online. I'm like, wow. Anyways, the point is, is that you're 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 talking about what you do and you're teaching people and helping them move forward. Right. They're leveling up and you work through the problems and you have a solution. That's interesting. Yeah, a little bit of your lifestyle. But if every time you're talking about yourself, yeah, you're not going anywhere. You, you, have, dude, to solve, you have to solve problems. Right. And, and unless you're like, I call it the infamous uh, Elon Musk, right? You're like, oh, I just want to hear the guy talk, right? Like he, he talks about himself and what he's working on. But if he just talked about himself and how great he is, <laughs> yeah. then it becomes egotistical and narcissist, right? Then nobody wants to hear you. And, but he built himself to that. I mean, like, right. if, if we're talking about Elon Musk when he was still in college, like if you heard the story, and this is where I'm being res- respect because I do respect Elon Musk oh, yeah. here. But like he was, he was a full on fucking beta dude. In college, 100%. In co- bro, like it was crazy. He was basically fiending after some white chick in college, like <laughs> losing himself over a girl and stuff. And then eventually, like the chick just kept rejecting him. And he, and he was like sending her love letters and doing all like all the chocolates and roses and all this stuff. It wasn't working. And then this, my man starts, starts making a company, <laughs> making money. Then he's got a fucking McLaren. And then the chick's like living in his house now. And those magic. are the, those are the magic. guys, those are the guys I work with. Yeah. The guys that are making money or on the up, come up, you know, trying to make money or they're somewhat successful or even successful guys. I've signed some NDAs with and it's like, they're like, what am I doing wrong? And, and I, I, not, I'm going to get, here's a cheat code. Please focus on your fucking money. Right. Say focus again, say focus on your fucking money. Cash before that. Focus on moving. Look, 
you okay there's that i just talked about it on a, a bizarre junkies shout out to them there's this new uh in fact chase was on there. there's and i can't remember the name of this crystal the, the chinese found this on the moon this 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 material is worth more than any material on the planet and it's and it's for i can't remember what it was help me out uh forgive me if i mispronounce it but it, it was called chengasite nine no yeah. chengasite y and and it's for, like it's for what fusion nuclear fusion nuclear fusion yeah, yeah. And, all right and so this thing is now there's a space race to the moon to get this material mm. right now if you throw that out there and say I'm that material all of a sudden you're oh my god look at that material I want it it's 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 the perception right like I say if 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 Elon Musk was in Seven Eleven yeah and he had a name tag that said Musk on and you're a chicken you walk in. You're like, oh, that guy's ugly. Oh, my God, he's right. going to ask me out. You give him a couple billion bucks, he's kind of cute, right? <laughs> and so I, I tell the guy, right? Are you with me? I'm and, with you, bro. And he's got status, and he's got a check mark. Jeff yeah. Bezos is not – okay, I'm not, I'm not capping on the dudes, yeah. okay? I'm not the best-looking guy. I'm a decent-looking dude, but, but I don't have billions of dollars in a blue check. I'm not a household name. Bezos paid – I say this. It was $38 billion he paid for his yeah. girlfriend. His girlfriend, right? So Jeff Bezos says, hey, I want that hot Latina chick that's a news reporter or an uh, 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 internet reporter, whatever. And he, he says, it's going to cost me $38 billion in a divorce. So he paid for his girlfriend. Now he's on, he's on TRT. He's probably on HGH. He's cut. He's big. He's in shape. He stepped down from Amazon. But you know what? He likes big booty Latinas, I feel. If that guy was at 7-Eleven. With a name tag that said Bezos, he wouldn't get a second look. Yeah. And so I tell these guys, look, focus on the upcome, man. Make, make your money. Invest. Do, do what you got to do. Because when you have that money, you have those assets and those network. Now you realize, look, I have options. Yeah. And you don't need a billion either. You no, don't you don't need a billion. No, you don't need a billion. But, the, but those are great stories just because yeah. how, how, the, like, how like black and white <laughs> how black and white it is. Right. It's right. Very, very icy. Very, no. <laughs> very icy. Is it black or white? No, it's, it's, it's a black and white. But, very but, black and white. You know what I'm saying? It's like these guys are chasing. I get it, man. Like your, your, your hormones are going. You're like, wow, whatever. But, man, I'm telling you. Once you, as you become successful, let, let, let your success speak for itself, yeah. you know? And it's not always about the car and the house, no, right? No, no, but, but when you, when you buy that McLaren or you buy that Mercedes, that Mercedes to, 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 to me is like buying a, a, you know, a $500 car, right? Or yeah, X, Y, Z. Not saying it's a break, but you know, it, the value isn't, it, it's affordable. Yeah. Like, uh, like it's those classic stories of like guys who make $50,000 a year and they got a $50,000 car. Which is like you know what I mean, and yeah. It, and it's a five year it's a five year lease or buy, or pay off or right, whatever. So right, it's like right. they're 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 sacrificing twenty percent of their entire income to right. get the key right. back car, not including interest. Right. Like versus somebody who's making a million dollars a year, a fifty thousand dollar car is like no, 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 five, no, not even five percent. Absolutely, and if it's a five year thing. We're talking about one percent of income. All these, all, all your, all your people taking your course. Yeah. All these people that are on your channel, your subscribers, great people that interact. I mean, they're great. I saw some of the lives. I went back and watched yeah. some of the lives. Great, great guys, great gals, right? These people, if they keep their head down, man, the next ten years, they got a two to five year plan, a five to seven year plan, and a seven to ten. In ten years, these people come back and look at this podcast and go, dude. I remember when I was only my net worth was ten grand. Now it's ten million. It's five million. It's three million. Like that, they have so much opportunity to follow your lead and what you're doing. It's going to be so impactful in life. And then they're going to look back, and there might be guys on here, twenty five years old, yeah. and ten years, bro, you're thirty five. Yeah. You're thirty five. You're still young, and you're the man. You can do whatever you want. You can get on a plane and, and fly to the Bahamas like that, and yeah. won't even dent your pocket. And you talk about, hey, I want to bring this girl with me. Great. Hey, come with me. Are you simping? No. You, she just wants to go to Bahamas with you. Right. And you don't even have to touch her. You say, hey, I just want a pretty girl with me. Let's go. Right. And the fact that you're not even interested is going to make her that much more attracted to you. There's, there's three peaks. And like, there's three peaks. I haven't heard too many people. I've heard people talk about like one, maybe one or two peaks for guys. But like there's three peaks for guys. There's 25, 35, and 45. Right. Right. And at 25 is kind of like you take somebody that's like a like, you know, really good looking dude and gets the muscles up, maybe starts getting a little money. Bam. Then there's the 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 the, the, the real the usual peak for a guy is like that whole youth peak, which is they're 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 older now, more mature, making money, but they're still young enough to right. do stuff. That's that 30 what was it 35 to 38 range mm -hmm. that there's that 45, which is they can keep you can maintain the body. And then it's just. It's because it just depends on where you plateau, and the thing is, it's never plateauing. I it's, think, it's going I think, for it. yeah, I think you got to adjust your game, right? Like, yeah. 
I know that I've hit my head in my industry. I'm only going to make so much. I don't want to do the big corporation anymore. I've done that song and dance before. It's just me, myself, it, and I and my MacBook, right? Is, is it the H? Is it like having the HR and like having like the kill that kills you or like what is it? it, it you know what it is? It, it's became so political. Po, po, what's the word I'm looking Politically for? Politically charged? Uh, yes. And, and, and the wokeism has taken mm. over so much. I'll be on a call and I submitted this guy. I, I, I this guy, his, he he came from Meta. Okay. Guy, the guy made a million dollars on his W two last year. Yep. This company was looking for a candidate, right? And the guy had in there. I was char- in charge of a like, you know, twenty man team right. on his resume. And one of the comments was, "Oh, I don't like that he said that." I said, "Said what? Twenty man team?" I go, "What are you talking about?" Well, he said, "Man." I'm like, "What?" What are you talking? Oh, uh, oh, able to go where no man's <laughs> gone before. Able to go where no one's gone before. It's like, are you serious? Look, this role. Was he supposed to say person? Oh, my God. And, and, and so when you're looking for a rendering and a graphics person, that's a person that does the graphics and the rendering of the video. Right. If you're looking for a top, top, top notch person, there's very few of those people that are really the Michael Jordans of what they do. Mm-hmm. So when you're, if you play video games, if you're a Twitch person or whatever, and you're playing a game, man, this looks so real. There's no, there's no hesitation, no glitches. The graphics are great. That guy is the, the lead rendering and graphics person. That guy came from Meta, made a million dollars on his W-2 yeah. with salary, stock options, everything, uh, everything right? All, everything put together. Expense card, everything. Everything. Yeah. And, and, and you send that guy, and he is the Michael Jordan or the LeBron James, if you will, or the Kobe Bryant, whatever, Tom Brady. Here you go. And somebody says, well, I don't like that he said 100-man team. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, you're that woke that you need to worry about what he said as far as man versus person. That's where I said, you know what? I'm done with this. And it just, it, 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 I got in trouble because I, I made fun of somebody's cat because they were talking about dogs. And I said, well, you know, at least I don't own a cat, right? I made a joke. <laughs> and HR, and I'm a client, and the HR is like, we need to talk to you about offending. I'll say her name Stacy because she has cats. I said, she's making fun of dogs. I can't make fun of cats. And, you know, it's like, look, you know, the woman's clipping her toenails at the desk with purple hair. And she bring her cat. To, she bring her cat to the office. Ugh. I'm a consultant that comes in. I said to this desk two days, ago, I don't want to see her hairy feet. I don't want to see purple hair. <laughs> I don't want to see a cat. But because I said something about her cat, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, you know, yeah. Just, yeah, so, yeah. This uh, victim mentality, but they, they systematize it. And so every time you're on a Zoom call, it becomes political. It becomes, oh, do you see what the governor did? Oh, you see what that guy did? It's like, look, I'm here to do business. I don't have time for the sh- charades, right? Yeah. So at the end, and, you know, you get, you get to a point where it's like, hey, I'm going in a different direction. I'm building my brand, building my YouTube, building my Instagram, building my product line, still in the tech industry. But now I'm focused on investing my energy and time into people. Right? right, you know what I mean? No, no, I got, I got you. I mean, and, and I invest in startups. I yeah, do yeah. that, right? So that's some. Of my there's, money. there's nothing wrong with like <clears throat> transitioning or or stepping stone. I have to. Stone. Yeah, you have to. Right? I hit my head. Yeah, I'm I, only going to make X amount of dollars because there's no passive revenue. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? So I have to invest it. But doing what I do, sure, I might make half a million, seven hundred thousand, a million dollars. But you know what? It's like kink, kink. Oh, there's a recession. Whoo! Seventy five percent of my revenue goes down. Look at this, Karn. Imagine giving your competitor a million dollar candidate just because someone got triggered. Wild. Yeah. And, just- and, and, and here's the thing: leaving Meta, there's fifty thousand people that got, lost their jobs from Twitter, Meta, Amazon. Uh, um, what's the other one? Google. 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 Right. Fifty thousand people later. All the Fang stocks. These guys and gals that are leaving know that they're going to take a huge pay cut. Look, those big companies. There's pros and cons working there. You make a lot of money, but you're just a number. It's metrics, yeah. right? It's the big Fortune 50, Fortune 10. You go to a startup, the rewards are so much better in terms of, hey, I, I'm working on a cool product. There's 50 employees. I have an opportunity to hit, hit a home run and, and be that next guy. Yeah. And, but I, but I'm, I'm, my salary is going to go down to 280 right. versus my salary is 480 plus bonuses, stocks, uh, restricted stock shares, all that stuff. Dude, and he knew that. Yeah. But you know where he went? I, uh, he went to another company that wasn't exciting right. that I was, recru- I was recruiting for a, a gaming company. He went to another company and I'm like, okay, but it was because of all the, the, the loopholes he had to jump through. Right. 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 There, there is, I mean, yeah, that is, that is a sort of thing, but like always put yourself in the position. I mean, like the thing that pissed me off is like, imagine you're making that kind of money. And then the, the, a lot of people are just 
I, I don't I don't get it. I mean, I would say well, fuck it. It's a lot of females doing it. You know, like playing those sort of the, games. It, well, HR is predominantly women. Yeah. Human resources, right? That's that's they they want to take a course in uh, in college, right? They're not taking STEM roles, right? In college, and then they come out and say, "Well, we're not making enough money." It's like, "Well, you didn't take science, technology, engineering, or, or math roles or, or college courses, right?" So, yeah. you, 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 human resources, communication, right? Um, art art degree, right? Okay. Are you with me? Yeah. So so when I look at that, it's like, okay, now I'm dealing with HR, and because I am a technical glorified recruiter. Guess who I got to deal with? Human mm. resources. Human resources. Damn, dude. I don't know if I'd have the patience for all that jazz, dude. Yeah, it's, that's that's crazy. But you know, I'm just, like, it, uh, you, you, I, I'm an educator. It's equal opportunity. I'll take anybody. I'll help them out and stuff. I had no prejudice or no nothing like that. But like, yeah, we don't play that. We don't play that snowflake shit because like we t- we tell people like this is mostly a man space and stuff like that. You gotta you gotta. It just is. This is what it is right now. Maybe when when it becomes all snowflakey later on, where everyone's snowflakey, maybe the, the gains are going to be gone. And the demand, like the the crypto, NFT, DeFi, uh, software engineers, people that are in that space, yeah, there's a big demand right before the crash. Those guys and gals that are doing that, man, if you're if you're a software engineer, focus in that space because man, when it takes off, your 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 demand is so high. Yeah. I mean, it's funny. They're like, oh, I need a guy with five years' experience. There's nobody out there with five years' experience. Barely anybody. And if they are, they're taken already. Right. Yeah. yeah but no one's giving, no but, one's giving but, them but up. Those, if you're studying right now and you're writing code, focus in that, that, that genre. Solidity. Yeah. Dude, game over. Yeah. Game over. You write your own. You, uh, I'm going to go work here, and I'm going to stay in Tulum, and I'm going to work remote. Yeah. It's it's crazy. I mean, like even even if you were just doing te- you were ten nine ninety it and stuff like that. If you're half decent, a half decent coder and solidity and stuff, you you're making banks. I, I I just don't see how you don't make a half a million. Oh, it's impossible. I, I, it's like you trip over money. Yeah, and, and I get tons of requests for those roles. You know, engineers. It's like, well, good luck. Oh, I don't want to pay them. Well, then they're gonna go work somewhere else. Yeah. And then that's not even counting if, if you, they help create a coin or something like that. They get tons of free coins from that. And so, so it's like stock options a little bit, but like they get a bunch of those free coins and they make a lot of money off of that. And like, NFT gaming, a yeah. lot of gaming companies. Yeah. They do that, you know. The, the, the game, yeah, the gaming, the gaming sector is exploding and stuff like that. Like, this is why, like, I, I mean, I, me and Charlie have, been, have seen that sector kind of like we, we knew that was kind of on the come up. And then we, on top of that, we saw there was more investment in that sector than there was in 2021 and 2022. The market was crashing and there was more VC money going into crypto gaming than there was in all of 21. Tons of money. My, Mythical Games is a company I was doing yeah. work for. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. I mean, the characters of Marketplace, man, they took off, right? They were yep. selling the little characters seven bucks. Now they're worth like 300. Yep. It's like, wait a minute. I didn't buy the tail. Trump NFTs, you guys. Trump <laughs> NFTs were a hundred. Look, you want to see some crazy shit? I was. I looked this up. Trump NFTs were a hundred dollars a pop. Hundred dollars a fucking pop. They're half a fucking Ethereum right now. That's like what seven hundred, eight hundred dollars. That's crazy, bro. That's that, that means when, when when our boy Trump's in office or he's running for office, those bitches are going to be over two, but three you, Ethereum. But, but, Sheesh! But you know the company Filthy. the company that's really going to take off is that chat company, right? That's out. GBT. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. Take, oh, they got a hundred million open, uh, open AI. Yeah, yeah the open AI. They got a hundred million subscribers in like what two days or three days? You know why? Working product. Right. It worked. It they, works. They, they they released their shittier ver- like I think it was like the version three or whatever. They have a better version of it that's paid for that they're not giving anyone that one, but they'll give them the dumb the dumbed down version. The dumbed down version is everyone's doing incredible things with that thing. Like I just like it's it's. There's that. What's that other one? That 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 other. Uh, I want to say GSP or something like that. There's another one out there that the AI is upset with humans. Did you see that? Yeah. Uh, what's it, what's his uh, name? I forgot the name? It's because people are fucking with it, doing stuff to it and stuff. Like trying, but like, yeah, it's supposedly like it, the, it's conscious. Yeah. Or I don't. I haven't looked too deep into it, but there's some shit that like, they've had to do racist slurs against humans and all this crap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you get that thing going, man. I, I'm, I'm trying to find it here. It's conscious AI. I mean, you, you, you if you have if you have an, an active AI, it's going to be half Hitler, half like. <laughs> half no, you, Buddha. It's oh gonna be like god. a half Buddha, half Hitler. <laughs> oh my gosh! No, Schizo. I, I can't even find it where where it was. But yeah, that 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 chat is is taken off. That AI, it's it's incredible. I even asked it questions. Uh, I asked a question: Do you think AI will take over the world over humans? And then it gave me like four paragraphs. And the third paragraph is like, uh, but you know, humans do make mistakes. So there's no basically saying it, it, it's saying there's no guarantee, but it's highly probable the ais will take over yeah and that's scary 
it is scary and there's like we should be putting the i mean like elon musk has literally said like we should be putting these things and laws in place right now before the shit gets out of hand but we won't yeah. it'll be too late right <laughs> Yeah. We'll be flying to another planet to survive. Yeah. Fallout Zone, haven't most um, AIs gone full blown Nazi? No, yeah, yeah. It's because what, what's going on is that people are trolling and shit and trying to put, like, they end up just putting tons and tons of stuff like that into Eventually, that becomes part of their personality. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God, man. It's, or, like, was, or what's or Rule 34 or some shit like that? Like, you know what Rule 34 is? No. If you can think about it, there's porn of it. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Well, you know, Skynet, right? What was yeah. that from the Terminator? You, yeah. Sky, you want to know something crazy? The the technology that the Chinese Communist Party is using to spy on other people is called Skynet. Are you serious? Yeah, 100%. Look it up. I'll have to look that up. Yeah. Are you it's kidding? Called, yep. Skynet. Oh, my gosh. Fucking A, bro. Oh, my gosh. Dude. I, you can't even make that up, dude. That's just wow, man. I can't find yo, this company yo. now. It's driving me nuts. Anyways, yeah. there's Chat GBT, but there's another one out there. I don't know. Anyways, no, that's some scary stuff. But man, I'm telling you, that's that's the, people are doing their college homework on that. Mm -hmm. They're writing essays and 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 they're doing their school reports and. Yeah. I mean, they're getting their doctrines with chat GBT, right? Or yeah. chat, G whatever it is. If they can figure it out, but at some point they'll, they'll figure out a way to kind of stop it and stuff. And there'll be a better version. Like one of the smartest things I saw just recently, like it actually like, sh woo, like Microsoft put like a hundred, what was a hundred million dollars? Like as soon as this thing really came out, put a hundred million back and they're, and they're putting a couple more billions into it to acquire it. So like now Microsoft's going to end up having um, an AI version. Like people are, you know, pe people are like bring back the paperclip. <laughs> Put the AI on it. I actually thought that was a great idea. That's, that's actually crazy. Like, that's, but um, super smart, and they've jumped like it's. What you want to know? Some crazy. Let me show you how the crazy this stuff is going with crypto AI. And then, I believe most of the crypto AI coins are total garbage. They're total trash because any. Imagine if you have any decent tech. Like right now, let's just say garage banding it right here. I I actually make an AI that's pretty decent. Why would I need to make a crypto version of it? Literally, I if I just show that I have an AI, they will throw hundreds of millions at me like with like a snap they will snap me up to like miguel 50 million like i'll give you 100 million cash shh, and then you're gonna be part of the company you're gonna be like and like, like they'll thing. exhort me in a second in a millisecond any company like oracle any tech company facebook anybody would throw that kind of money google you'd be retarded not to right now. oh yeah like 100 uh, it, it, it's that crazy like if i were now if i really like now now if since i am crypto native if i did do that i would would try to do other crypto route but most people it's just so much easier just like legal wise and everything just you would just go into a company can't you can't you use uh ai to predict the the market yeah it'll try it'll try and then what will end up happening is then you have people uh people living off of that right there then people start counter trading that so at first it might end up working actually you might have some people like the, the ai is actually correctly predicting that and then you'll have guys then like we'll input so what uh, how do i counter trade this if knowing that an ai is helping but there there are already five steps ahead. it's already five yeah. steps ahead because it knows yeah. you're going to try to counter trade yeah right like it, it's already beat the best chess player in the world mm -hmm. it's already beat what's that other uh chinese uh board game the one with the uh, oh um uh help me out here it's got the black and white uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's go no what, not, what is that called Nobody knows what the hell we're talking about. I know what game you're talking about. But it, it beat the best player in the world. So it, it's already 10 Pai steps. Pygo? No, not Pygo. Uh, You've been in the casino. You know, I've been in the casino a lot, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like Shogu or something? Shogu. You sh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a Japanese version, I think. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Go. I said go. Yeah, Fallout, saying, Fallout Zone saying go. But um, yeah, the, the black and white pieces and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so. It's go. Yeah, they're saying it's go. It's, it's 10 steps ahead. Yeah. So when you said it's gonna, you're gonna bet against it. It already knows. Yeah. So it's gonna shift its course. So I mean, it takes a lot of creativity out of everything you do. Like it's creating art now. Yeah. Artists are upset, right? You see this thing where artists are really getting upset at AI because AI is creating the art. So so what's gonna happen? So here, let me tell you. I've said this. This is crazy because I've said this before in the courses. And I've said this on my streams. You go far back enough that eventually, the only thing that's gonna matter is imagination. Because the AI won't, the only thing AI won't be able to do is basically recreate imagination and and, re, and so you can do anything with the AI, but it's not creative enough to do anything. It will just make general. It will make it will, like right now it can. Well, do if it's conscious, it, it can. If, if it's conscious, right? But it's not at that level yet. Truly, like it's, true, it's not. But didn't that guy that left Google say that it, 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 he didn't? He say that he feels it's conscious. He, Remember the guy that left Google. 
They yeah, spilled yeah. the beans. He said he had a conversation with it and that the AI was coming back and forth. And I know your subscribers have seen this. And, yeah. and it, the, the AI was saying, hey, you know, I think I'm human or something right. to that effect. Or I have feelings. It's conscious. Like he had an in-depth conversation that went beyond just answers. It was elaborating on those answers in, in, in depth and being creative, like having a conversation with a person. And, and it's like, dude, this thing. And then he blew the whistle. Yeah, and Google like fired the guy and everything. You've seen this, right? Yeah, I've heard the story. So yeah. if it is, then then it, maybe we do have it, but I know it's not out in the commercial use. No, yeah. no, 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 nothing, no. That's what I'm trying to say. But like, but yeah, I mean, I mean, if, if, I mean, if uh, the only story I can think about that we're, if we're heading towards this sort of thing, we're going to head toward to a Dune society. <laughs> we're like, I don't know if you've heard Dune before. Like, basically, like. What ends up happening is that AI ends up rising and stuff, and humans end up fighting it off. Eventually, we destroy all it's all, all artificial intelligence, and then eventually, from there, in order to, we can't even use like we, they're scared to even use calculators. So what they end up doing is that they end up breeding people. Um, in pro, it becomes biological computers instead. So I, I know that's so off topic. Wow, but, man. Okay. So, okay. No, no, this is this, good. This is this the is spice, good. The, spice the, the subscribers. No, no. Ready, My, ready, I mean, ready, this, ready, ready for this. I'm going to tell your subscribers, real doll. You know what that is? No. Okay. Real doll is a an adult <coughs> doll. Oh, here women. We go. No, here wait, we go. hold on. <laughs> See? <laughs> Leave it to me to mess this show up. Okay, wait, they're adding AI to this thing. Oh fuck. So here's here's the thing. Women down bad. I know. Now we're going down the, the rabbit hole. But they, the real doll is an a a, a a female or a male too. Uh a, a enjoyment entertainment. Yeah. Silicone doll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they have the robotics. Now they have the AI. Okay. And they have the wombs now. Now, if we have that that comes out, we're all in trouble. They're working on that. Yeah. I mean, you, you see what I'm saying? Because then, then the whole dating and relationship market's down the tube, right? right? It's 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 south. Because now you don't have to. You can pick and choose what you want. I'm gonna buy it. When Real Doll came out, I mean, Google it. Check it out, man. These guys have been make, selling them. They're selling them. Not with the AI, of course, right? But but think about that. Think about where we're going. And, and there's been some new... I can't remember the movie. There was a little kid that was running around. There was all these cyborgs and stuff. Yeah. And you know what I'm talking about? Came, there was a it balloon. just came out. Yeah. Karen or whatever. No, was I watched that. That yeah. was freaky. But there was another one that came out years ago. And this little kid's running around, and he couldn't tell the difference between a real, a real person or a, a cyborg. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be scary, because then it's going to be like, uh, I need to do a blood check, right? And right. everywhere you go, you're going to have to do a fingerprint. Right. You guys don't have to like me as president soon enough, man. Like, I'm going to put all these. If I can get into office enough, I'll save us, my man. But damn, dude. Like, we're not. Like, I, I think the big problem is, is that we just have too many old people in Congress and just, like, they don't understand this shit. Like, sometimes I. I you got to change. You have to you change. You have to change. Like, I will say this the older you get, the harder it is to adapt and change. It really is. Yeah. It really is. And I know. I'm like, dude, I don't get it. And then I have to sit there and read and study and think, okay, I get it. For me, understanding how crypto works is so challenging. For a younger person, they're like, oh, it's simple. Well, I don't get it, you know, so I'm right. learning. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, But you're rare, but you keep trying to learn. I mean, that's the, the thing is, is there's tons of people like, nope, I know it all now. That's it. That's you it. Know, if, you know, if you think you know it all, you're failing. Yeah. You're failing. Nobody knows it all. Elon even says he doesn't know it all. The guy's like, he is the, on, on textbook, on paper, the richest man in the world. But then you go to like Dubai and Saudi Arabia where stuff's off the books. Yeah. How much money do those do? Those cats have tons of the money. Trillions. Trillions. So do you think that Elon is truly the wealthiest no, man? Absolutely not. How, so how many people? Do you think there's five more, ten more? Oh, no, there's more than that. There's probably, probably three or four hundred more. Are you serious? I think there really is. Yeah. There's some crazy. There's some. Now I ain't gonna. Well, we. Do you think that there's a trillionaire out there? Yes. Hundred percent. That's that. That's not even a question. Yeah, of course. But he's not exposing he or she. No, because they don't have to. They don't have to. Basically, there is people. There's on top of that. There's people who private who who through corporations own trusts, who own all this other stuff that they own tons of land. There's people who own so much land that they're basically trillionaires. But you wouldn't. You because not, it's not in their name. It's not in their name, and you wouldn't know it. And so they have to control over tons of stuff. And like, I, I forgot. I forgot what it is. Like ultimate power is not ownership. It's control over that thing or whatever. Like it, there's there's like stuff like that. That's. That's a Pepe moment. You gotta say that again. <laughs> say that again.
got to say that again. So, you know, ultimate power isn't having control over something or isn't having ownership of something. It's having control over something. That's what it is. Like, the, the, as long as they have the control, like, this is what, like, this is what, and that's kind of true, kind of not true, but at, like, the higher scale is, like, if they can dictate things for it and they have control of it, then they really own it. Really, even you like it's it's sort of like the whole land thing, right? Like, now let's just say you pay off your land, right? Try not paying taxes on it. Do you really own it? No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, eminent domain. Eminent domain. Yeah, exactly. I, th- I think, and also there's only one. I can't remember the clause, but I read about it. Owning a title, owning something, you can't get it in this country. But there's a word for it, a phrase to have the title in your name, and yeah. and we can't do that in this country. Yeah, and there's another thing too. It's like um, a straw man. You ever heard of the strong yes. thing? Yep. I actually have the books not with me, but there's this whole thing where like you're born in tech, like because technically the United States government shouldn't be able, you can you cannot tax citizens. And, the, and the, there's yeah, it was a, it's called a voluntary tax system. Yeah. Initially, but if you don't pay, you're gonna go. You're gonna you're, be in trouble. Yeah, we're gonna fuck you up. This is the whole thing. Why the United States? The, the, and this is the this is the, the the sort of thing where a lot of guys can't accept this shit. And even like even crypto bros can't accept this shit. It's like the dollar's gonna be worthless. It's it's this and this. It's backed by nothing. Gold, silver. This, the gold and silver guys like have fucking like spasms and fucking <laughs> they they have they die damn near talking about this shit. But but it's like, bro, he, they displaced gold and silver. Effectively, they, 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 Nixon they did, did that. Didn't Nick, he? Yeah, Nixon. Yeah, Nixon did that. But technically, we, I mean, we've really been off a real gold standard since like 1933, 1936. So, okay, there. Okay, there's. Okay, I gotta make him think. See, oh I make God. I make there, you work. There, yeah, I, make I bring it. up all the shit. You're like, there, there, there is some crazy shit I've been trying to like. I've been been thinking about ma- making this giant stream about like a, a, a like. The only other thing that you could take, you could take, go into history that you can relate the crypto industry to, like the expense, and fuck the, fuck the dot com boom. Like, one of the, the, the real big one is actually going back to the 1920s to going into the actual, like, the roaring 20s of stock market. So, it, in order to go that, right, basically what happened is we, and we, in World War I, it ended, I think it ended in what, 1918. During World War I, they, they issued something called war bonds. And basically, they would you would um, you would pay five cents for a war bond or a penny, and then they would say it would pay you back three cents when the war is over, or five or ten cents, ten cents. So it was the first time that Americans ever had ability to actually save money or to put something in something that would gain them interest in, in cash. So it was, it was basically you had a lot of people because of the war you couldn't spend anything, so you had a bunch of Americans save a shit ton of money, basically fifty percent plus of their income buy war bonds that money would be used to pay the war off and stuff like that and then the government over time started paying people back these things so imagine even if they didn't pay you interest people are so fucking bad at saving money mm. that just having your savings come back to you is is just like wow look at all this money because power amplifies because money amplifies so a thou- the, the stuff you can buy with $1000 is dwar- like imagine all right, you have $1000 you have $10000 how much more stuff can you buy with 10 over 1000 it's not 10 times it's almost 100 times more stuff Wow. Because you think of all the optionalities of just like that ten thousand dollars gives me the ability to do this, this, just the options in the multiverse. Right. Like versus a hundred, a million, ten million, a billion. If you have a billion, what can you do? Versus a hundred million. It's it's in, it's just it's in, a billion, you can do what you want to do. It's insane. Just the power the power scaling. It's it doesn't ten X, it just it, it it squares itself. That's how insane it is. So um, what ended up happening is you, a bunch of American soldiers would just take their pay and just say, fuck it, well, I mean, they would give back some of their family, other, the other people, they'd invest in war bonds. So you ended up having, for the first time in history, you had the average American having savings for the first time. This is, And then what ended up happening is that uh, once the war ended, the bond, the U.S. bond market was truly created because you um, t- back in the day, the only thing you would, um, only very... Very, very rich middle class. It was usually like lower rich to actually very rich or business owners would actually play around the stock market. It was completely not used by middle class to below. What ended up happening is it brought the middle class and even lower middle class into the bond market. This way, to this day, the bond market is the largest market in the world, even wow. now. Even now, yeah. It was only dwarfed by the Forex market, which is international uh, countries trading with their dollar. That's their, their, crazy. Yeah, yeah. The, it's, it's insane. So the bond market started off of that, right? Then from there, they said, it was like, wow, these guys are all buying bonds now. Shit, we might as well see if we can sell them stocks. So it, what ended up happening is that we, if you actually look at the stock market, from, eight, from 1918 to 1923 or 22, we had a huge run in the bull market. Basically, um, mostly uh, tech stocks were pumping, which were at the time, um, it was uh, radio companies. 
Wow. Yeah. So wasn't, it was, it the, wasn't the Vanderbilts in that as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Railroads, it's war, war bonds for railroads and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was but that was mostly in the um uh was it eighteen seventies to eighteen nineties and stuff. But you still had railroads being built and stuff. Okay. Like that. Okay. So yeah. So there was tons of like rail, like the the bonds of the, the the best bonds to invest in back in the day were basically railroad uh, railroad bonds basically wow. because one side was built out. It was it'd be, it'd be, because you had a railroad. Damn, you had a mafia basically because it's like there was only one railroad that right. would cross through there. So you would just. It was just a cash machine. Fish. cash machine. And to this day, this is why Warren Buffett bought um, railroad companies. And like you know, he he owns, a, I think he owns probably like 25% of the railroads in, in the United States. Guy. It's because, yeah, because it's a cash machine. You can't build them anymore. Like the amount, like they're fucking crying over the, the like now, whether it's right or wrong, the, the, the Keystone Pipeline, because it goes through a couple of, um, it goes through an Indian reservation. Right. Right. Now, if we're being for real here, we're being, we're being 100, right? Now, we'll say I'm Hispanic, but DNA test-wise, I'm actually 40% Native American plus. So, well, because like, uh, 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 Mexicans are Native Americans. No, yeah, they are Native Americans. But, like, watch this. Native Americans from Canada, United States, Mexico, all the way down to the tip, to the tip down there in South America, there's no difference in the blood. At all, right, right. It's all the same people now. Different cultures. That's that's a different thing. But right. But blood wise, it's the same shit, right? <laughs> anyway, and we all and I, <laughs> and I I probably have one or two percent. Yeah, if you did DNA, you, you'd you'd have Native American in you. But yeah, yeah I mean, I'm hundreds of hundreds of thousands more than Elizabeth Warren, a Native American. <laughs> <laughs> She's the only billions time, of hey, percentage wait, points. No, I was going to say it. The only time she was a Native American was on Halloween, bro. Come on, let's yo. be let's be one hundred. She put the <laughs> costume on. She said, "I'm Native American." Dude, that woman. Yo, you want to hear one of the biggest roasts of all time, dude? Oh my god, that dude, woman. Trump. Trump destroyed her. It was like, okay, Pocahontas. Woo! Oh man, don't Pepe say on that. Pepe on oh, that. Man. Just... Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Everyone live watching right now is more Native American than Elizabeth Warren. Everybody, oh, <laughs> everybody in chat right now. Oh my! My God. producers, the man sitting next to me on the chair. This, this mahogany, son. This ain't even real mahogany, and this is more Native American than Elizabeth. Particle Warren. board, bro. From IKEA. Like the, the people who built this is probably more <laughs> <laughs> Norwegian. <laughs> Wait, IKEA, <laughs> right? Oh my God. But okay, but all jokes aside, right? Um, basically, what's going on is now, now this, this is just—I'm just being 100. I'm pretty sure that there's parties within the U.S. government that are paying a lot of the Native Americans in there to cause problems. The chief, in order to get like certain deals to make casinos and stuff like. I mean, there's, 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 there, there like. Well, now, now, the, now, the, the oil. Lot, lot, this ahead, all comes down to oil, in yeah. Russia, right? It, it, no, 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 no. This we, well, because if the oil's below seventy-five dollars a barrel. Oh, that angle. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then Russia right. can't fight their war. Right. We know that. Yeah, yeah. And, but you think they want it. But here, here. So there's like a two prong problem, right? Like, they, should it be built? I think it should be built, of course, right? And it's more supply. And it's actually hurt in Canada tremendously because they can't really export oil. Like, because we'd buy, we would buy Canadian oil. Makes sense. And then it would cause more of a supply issue, or a more, more supply and stuff. But this is one of the reasons why the Canadian dollar is so in the shitter right now, mm -hmm. is because. They're, we're not buy, we're not really buying tar so they mostly get their oil from tar sand tar sands and stuff like that and and fracking and they're not able to export their oil to the United States and they're having a hell of a time because if they if they can't cross oil through the US border since it's the longest border in the world they have to ship it by railway or by the, whatever whatever means that can either either side of Canada and stuff so there's huge costs in order to get their oil out so they're having a hell of a time um, exporting their oil in order to get dollars. That's that's why like we're having like the Canadian dollar so weak to the to the, the US Seven, dollar. Seventy four cents to a dollar. Yeah. That's the, horrible. The other day I saw it seventy one. It touched yeah, yeah, it touched sixty eight. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 
And we, basically, the United States did this to Venezuela. Thank you, Hugh Hefner. Uh, we, this, this also happened to He's Venezuela. back? No, he's back. From the, he's back. Yeah. Um, the yo, first damn Blazerian. <laughs> yo, my girl, man. Yo, I had, yo, I had some. Man, I'll tell you something, man. I had some. Fuck, man. Your girl, I, didn't, know, you, your girl didn't know who he was. No, he knew who he was. No, this, she just said some, some stupid shit that I was just. I, I fucking laughed in her face so hard. My girl didn't know who he was. Yeah. So who, she's like, who's Hugh Hefner? What's Playboy? She she didn't know. Wow. She's born in Mexico, man. She yeah. came here. She's twenty. She's thirty now. She's twenty six when I met her. Yeah, yeah. She didn't know it was Playboy because Playboy magazines nobody knows. No, no one. It's it's dead and gone now. But outside of the casinos, <laughs> right, right, or or the party, or maybe if you're lucky enough to go to the parties or here or there. But um, basically, what happened with uh, well, we'll get back to the stock market stuff in a second. But basically, what happened with um, Venezuela is basically they have something called heavy heavy sour crude, which is. It's basically the oil that they pump out. It's almost like tar sands, almost like they have in Canada. It's a very thick, thick oil. Like a crude oil. It's a very thick crude oil. It's a very. It's not like it's not. It take. It takes a very heavy amount of processing in to order refine to, it. to refine it down, right? So the technologically, the only people who could actually refine it, or in North America, or in Canada, and because of the embargoes that the United States ended up putting on Venezuela, basically. What ended up happening is during, when we put those embargoes down, we discovered fracking. Fracking, the fracking in the United States creates something called light sweet, light sweet crude, and it's the easiest to refine um, oil in the world. So why are we trying to end fracking? It's a bunch of lefties and shit, but like it's it's mostly like it's, there's a lot, there's a lot of Saudi money and a lot of like foreign money. Um, a lot a lot of the interest that end up happening it's foreign countries lobbying because the United States did that. Woo, that fuck up the rest of the, the, the global market, mm. right? But we're heading towards deglobalization. So what, So watch this. Oh, my God. We, just, we keep jumping in the rabbit holes, but it's beautiful. So I'll watch this. So basically, before the year before Trump left, we were creating enough oil in the United States that we no longer needed to buy foreign oil anymore. And that's what we, we're supposed to do. That's what we're supposed to do. And what ended up happening is the Saudi Arabians decided to IPO a Saudi Aramco, 1% of the company. And by what, wh- why would they do that? So let me tell you this: the reason that they would they would take they would take a Saudi Aramco and make it go public is because of this. Because then from there they would have to do a entire they would have to go in and then graph out all the land, see the assets they have, and then they would have to disclose how much oil they actually truly owned. And basically, there's just all this bullshit back in the day, like oh no, there's there's not infinite oil. They have trillions and trillions of ba- basically infinite oil. Wow. In the, basically, the Saudis ain't running out of oil. It's a lie. Like, the, they, they did that shit to collapse the price of oil, to bankrupt the fucking, the, the, um, the bankrupt the, um, the, the frackers in the United States. So Saudi Aramco went public. The company became the world's most valuable company. 1% of the company. 1% of the company went public. Just 1%. And a Saudi Aramco came out $2 trillion. At the time, App- Apple had just hit a trillion. This is a couple years ago. They had just hit a trillion dollars. And Saudi Aramco was worth two trillion, one percent of the. Co- that means the entire company is worth two hundred trillion plus dollars. Wow, that's insane. And so few people even know that story and shit. But like, that's what that's just some of the ge- geopolitical shit that's going on. So, th- so basically, the Saudis were like, "Fuck this. We'd rather own. We'd rather just get paid on thirty to fifty dollar oil forever than have you motherfuckers stop buying from us." Mm. That's, that's what that's what happened with fracking. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. DC needs to start an oil channel. <laughs> Something, man. So so okay. So there, there's that. Now, now with Venezuela, basically because we, we're no longer working with them, the, the reason their country went total went totally to shit is because there's there. Not even like the the amount only maybe the Saudi Arabians barely, but basically only a, only the sweet. There's a couple of Swedish companies, maybe the guys who own Shell and stuff like like. There's only a couple of companies around the world, maybe British Petroleum or Shell or the United States, could actually technologically process that they're crude. So basically, what ended up happening is most of the oil, whatever oil production or like whatever they could, they can't create enough supply of it. So the government just collapsed and their dollar collapsed because you don't have access to dollars because the dollar is king. And, right. and like but Miguel, what bad? But 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 like the Saudis actually could like fuck this. You know, if, if we're being for real, the, all the United States has to do is take one oil carrier, blow it up in the Hort, in the Strait of Hormuz during the thing, shut the entire global forty percent of the oil and of the world trade goes down right through the, the the Strait of Hormuz. Shut that down, boom! You collapse every country in the world. The United States, all they have to do is just take out their supercarriers and just let everyone kill each other in the Middle East. 
It's so simple. Like, we don't. We don't even got to. Not one bullet. Pull all our troops out. Pull all our bases out. Reverse out. Just leave. And then and they kill each other. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Like, Who, okay. Who's voting for McGill for president? I, I nominate. Haram. <laughs> I nominate you. You got my vote. <laughs> Let's do it. I know it's so. It's how much so money fun. can we? How much money can we raise for you? Oh, bro. I mean, shit. Let's. Uh, <laughs> I gotta be thirty-five first. I want to run for president, but <sighs> that's crazy. I got time, man. Jesus Christ didn't uh, become Jesus Christ until thirty-five. <laughs> hey, let's just deal with Trump and Desantis going at it now. Oh, I didn't hear about. Did this. you hear about that? No, no, I didn't hear about this. I saw that somewhere today online. I guess they're 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 going at it, which we didn't want that. Yeah, we don't. Uh, engineers. I don't want to look it up, but I, it was something online that were uh, Trump and DeSantis. Yeah, because DeSantis is going to be like the main, per- like that's really the person they want as the VP, basically, you know, for the Republican Party. But they don't get along. But they don't get they don't get along. But that's what everyone. That's a dream team. That's like shit. Like that's the, that's the dream team that they had in the Olympics with yeah, with, yeah. with Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson and and all yeah. the greats, right? Yeah, exactly. Larry Bird, Larry Bird, and everything. But they they didn't let what's his name in. Um, fuck the guy from the Detroit Pistons. Oh. Is everyone fucking hated him? Oh, 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 God, was, num- he was number 11. Yeah. What was his name? God, that's going to bog me. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> Why you got me working on Google, right? Uh, yeah, I know, right? But uh, what the hell was his name? Uh, Detroit Pistons, one of the, the bad boys and shit there and stuff like that. Um, oh, yeah. Everyone yeah. fucking hated the dude just because he was so rough. I'm going to look it up while you're talking, man. And, it, and Michael Jordan was, like, cool with him playing on the, te- on the All-Star team, except it was, like, la- it, was, uh, it was actually uh, Magic Johnson said, fuck no. <laughs> That's um, black, black Joe. Like, it's such a dumb rule about being 35. I kind of, like... I, uh, I, Isaiah I, Thomas? Isaiah Thomas. There we go. Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Later, Thomas. Damn, G, thank you. Coming in clutch. But yeah, hey, Isaiah, where's the engineers at when we need them? Yeah, engineers? Huh? <laughs> Jamie, <laughs> Jamie too? What's up? <laughs> we can't... Exactly. Look, What's we up? Can't, They're on coffee break. <laughs> we, can't, uh, we can't look stuff up while we're running your... Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, overlay for the Super Chats. Oh. That's why we got your screen on there, brother. Yeah. We got to oh. buy him another computer. Yeah. Crypto Boogie's got right. I'll take Trump Cruise. I actually would take Trump Cruise. Definitely. I'd rather have that. Cruise has gone bait. Cruise has pivoted. Because Cruise was like real. Like, I, I've seen like Ted Cruz that really was like eh, about him forever. But like recently, he's, he's kind of gone more pro gun and then even pro crypto a little bit. Like that. So, I mean, right now, it's, it's so bad in politics. Well, if anyone even says, like, yeah, Bitcoin's okay, that's our guy. That's how I mean, you know the Mexicans is like that's our guy. That's our guy. Like I mean, literally, it's like we're so pathetic in crypto right now. They're like, if anyone even says any sweet anything, or like isn't negative against crypto, it's like yeah, crypto thinks should be around. That's our guy. That's our guy. We're voting that guy. That, that guy. That guy gets in office, man. That's what we should buy. We vote, man. I yeah. like it. Yeah, they said Latino should be in America, and that's what we said. Oh, that's what we vote for. That's our guy. That's it. I'm, I'm looking it up now. I want to see what happened today with these two. Oh, they were two shit. It. Ron Sanders responds to Trump's grimmer charge. At diaper, uh, okay. I don't know. They got they got some issues going on, but yeah. you know we we don't want to. But honestly, Trump doesn't need DeSantis. Or like, we're being for real. Like, come on. Like, they, it doesn't like. I mean, I mean, I don't. I didn't like the the previous VP personally. But who did he have? Um, you see, I can't even fucking remember his name. Um, oh shit, Pence, Pence, Pence. Yeah, Mike, 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 Mike Pence. Pence. Yeah. Now, I thought the guy was just a little too weirdly religious in a weird way. Yeah, personally, yeah, yeah, yeah. personally. No, I, I'm with you personally. But I take I mean, Trump Cruz. <laughs> Send it. That seems like so a good team. Yeah. Oh yeah. Done deal. Yeah. Now watch uh, watch the voting come out wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I just want Trump to run again just for all the hilarity. Because for a year. because oh, he, oh he got his face. Not that. Okay. This is funny. He got his Facebook back today after two year ban. Sheesh. He's on Twitter. Sheesh. If he wants to, but he has his own platform. Yeah. 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 Uh, and and his son uh, Donald Trump Jr. is the one is all over social media making waves for him. Don- Donald Trump Jr. is a G, dude. Yeah, yeah he's, he's he's the man. Uh, and but you know the thing is the guy's gonna come back and piss everybody off. And this is where all you got, of Trump's kids are great people. You just, good, you, I just tell he people raises this. kids right. Look, I tell people this. Look, get, the best thing you can do is put your feelings aside. And and one of my, one of the things I practice is taking a moment before I react. You you always got to sit there and just take a couple steps back and look at the bigger picture. Right. Right. Somebody, you know, what sets people off? You know, gender, race, money. Right. That'll set anybody off. And certain people get triggered. And, and sometimes you got to look. OK, let me do my due diligence. I always tell people, look, whoever you vote for, do your homework. Don't do it based on feelings. You know, yeah. I feel I'm upset. I feel he did this. And when you ask somebody, it's like, what do you do? They can't answer you. They can't answer you. Yeah. 
I, I dealt with this in, in the black community, being black. You know, oh, he's racist. What, what, what did he do that was racist? It goes back to that MS-13 thing. He didn't say anything bad about Mexicans, yeah. right? But, oh, he's racist. He doesn't like Mexicans. It was mostly about the cartels. If we're being, if we're being honest, it was mostly about the cartels, right. which I'm with. Dude, most – do you notice most Mexicans – let's just say Latino, legitimately. <laughs> most – well, well, there is some weird Latinos on the East Coast, but, like – I, but mo- <laughs> most let's be there goes the Dominicans yeah, and Puerto Ricans Dominicans, like yeah. Papi, what are you talking about? Hey, papi, ¿qué estás hablando, güey? Papi chulo, <laughs> me, me, me llaman pan dulce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whatever he said, right? But, but are you with me? Yeah, yeah, but but like most Latinos are actually Republican. Once they got there, like, they, they are they, now. When they're they when are they're, now when they're illegal, they're Democrat. But that's because they're trying to like hustle their way right. into getting papers. As soon as right. the papers, like they're fucking Republican. Right. And I and I respect them for trying to to come here. I get yeah. that. Legally is what we want, but but in the black community, it, they they played that race war, yeah. and a lot of the blacks, man, I talked to them. It's like even in my even in my neighborhood, I don't. We're going down this rabbit hole. Screw yeah, it. Put, I don't give let's a go, let's go. You know, she pulls in. She got BLM on her front plate. I'm like, <laughs> dude, you you, what? you don't get it. That was that was uh, that was a window a, a, a window shade yeah. for for the whole LGBTQ community yeah. as a push, right? It wasn't about being black. Yeah. Had nothing to do with about being black, right? Yeah. So, no, so, so go no, ahead. Go, no, yeah, go, go ahead. So so for me, I, when I talk to black people, the, the ones, I, and I call them the plantation black m- mindset. Mm. Do your homework. Like, oh, we, you know, we got to wear, a, I'm going to go, I don't know why I'm going to go here. I always go here, but I asked the other day, I went, got a mask on. I said, mm. why, are you, why are you wearing a mask? Oh, you mean recently? Yeah, yeah, I said, why are you wearing a mask? What? She was not safe. I said, okay, why did you, okay. I said, didn't the government tell you, your local government, that you don't need the mask? I don't trust them. But you put the mask on because the government told you to. You trusted them then, but now you don't trust them. There's, there's certain ethnic backgrounds and races that, that get, get controlled very easy by fear. They're right. fear-based. That's how they run the political agenda. It's fear-based. We're going we're gonna to install fear into this culture, and we're going to get them to vote for us. Okay. Shout out to Bitcoiners. Right? Are you are you with me? So yeah. so now the white 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 this white privilege white this is like, dude, you got more privilege being black getting a job than a white person. I can say that I've been in the tech industry. Oh I've, right, because they have quotas to fill and stuff. Yeah, like. yeah you know yeah, white, what what, yeah. what privilege do white people have? And then we get down this whole race thing, yeah. right? And so my point is, when I'm talking to black people, I can't talk to Hispanics. My girl can. Yeah, I'm like, why are you voting this way? They're going to help. First of all, do you feel you need help? Mm. Let's start there as, as a person. Yeah. Forget the race. Why do you need help? Who told you you needed help? Why do you feel that way? And then we get down the root of the problem. And it's not even about race. It's about I, you, who told, why do you want a handout? Are you lesser of a person or human being than that person because they're brown, yeah. they're yellow, they're I'd, white? I'd rather, I'd rather have a program in place right. to have a business loan. Exactly. Or, then, then any like have them help themselves with that. Like fuck, fuck trying to give people money. I'd rather have like show us, show us like what's your plan? Are you planning to make a barber shop or something? Here's like like the crypto people on your channel. Yeah. they're not even talking about race. They're like, dude, help us out, make crypto, help us make money. It, it, Bro, I, they focus. You gotta if you focus on in the now. If you focus on your problem, it creates a bigger problem. Yeah. What was me? You know, it's like uh, oh, every black person in California is gonna get five million dollars now if they can prove they're black. Have you heard that? <laughs> what? Did no. you didn't hear about that? No, I'm not in California anymore. So reparations? You didn't hear about the reparations? Oh, my God. Oh, my. But here, I, I guess. Hey, it, it, go I, ahead. I'm always wearing my Jordans. I just want to say that. Just like, oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> to oh, my, but, but, but my point is this. Like, do your due diligence as a human being. Right. Don't get focused on all this BS the media, right or left. Right. But do your due diligence, man. Do you want a better economy? Do you want lower taxes? Do you want a better opportunities for uh, for jobs or running a business or, or or having a voice or freedom of speech? Who are you gonna vote for? I don't like his tan. I don't give a shit if he's yeah. orange, yellow, apricot. If if my if if an opportunity to live better as an American, forget race, and we have a better opportunity. Crypto comes back, stock market comes back, yeah. housing goes up, your income goes up, more jobs. We're living, we're living the life. Well, I don't like it. I don't care. Yeah. Would you want to live like we're living now, or do you want to live like you can live, like we were before? Right. Are you with me? And so for me, my passion is, is talking to the community and saying, look, man, take your race out of it. It had nothing to do with race, but you were fed that lie. Yeah. You were fed that lie. And I, I get passionate about it like I am now. It's like, dude, you know, and like you said, uh, uh, props to the Mexicans. They get it. They get it. They're like, no, this, this motherfucker lied to us. Yeah. Are you with me? No, no, yeah. 
I mean, that, that is one of the funniest things. That I think, like, <laughs> I there's actually a lot of, like, Democrats really pissed off at Latinos just because, like, we put so much money into you guys, and then, like, they all turned out Republican. <laughs> well, what did they do? Right? Not, just some what did bu- they do? Some bullshit wick. Yeah, bu- it, yeah, exactly. You uh, you kept us down. You didn't you didn't give us a solution. Oh, you gave us Section Eight. Section but, Eight. Oh my God. But 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 we can't, can't have a man in the house. Yeah. So our kids are going to grow up. The nuclear family's right. gone. Or I make more money and they charge and increase my rent. Right. Or, or they take me off of Section Eight and wick, and I'm penalized for trying to move forward and get a job. Yeah. Or if my kids start making more money, then like as you could you can have your like you can have an 18 year old son. Like like I'm I, I know a people I have fam, people and family. Uh, friends and family that they're you know they're, that they're going through this where like they have to find ways to like hustle to make money in cash because if if I start put depositing money into my bank account my mom's rent's gonna fucking go through the fucking roof and I'm not can saying believe, can you and, believe that bullshit and, and, and here's the thing don't get it twisted I'm not saying don't help people but there's a way to help people and and and, and motivate them and and to get off the system and do better. No, no, we want slaves, bro. Because they want more taxes. They want more tax and they want more votes. I want de- I'm people dependent on us. They want more votes, man. You know, hey, if I vote for this guy, he's going to keep me on unlimited Section yeah. 8 and there's a bonus. Crypto Boogie's right. AOC made it, us Latinos look bad Latin. Dude, the, the whole Latino community lost their shit over that Latinx shit. No, oh, ever, fuck all that shit. There's yeah, this whole agenda. Dude. There's all this agenda just to make it like, like a lot of Latinos coming out now to look, make them look queer. There's a bunch of this weird shit. Like they're like pumping out Bad Bunny and stuff like that in the dress. And st- it's really see, see, weird see, shit, dude. See, see, that's what the BLM was about, right? Mm-hmm. It wasn't even about race. It's about the LGBTQ community, yeah. right? And and the gender wars. And now and it got to the Latins, and they're like, uh, uh-uh. uh, no, no, no. We see through that bullshit. There's still so much cheese in this community, still. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, shout out to them, man. Like fight back, man. It's a war. It's a war of attrition on three fronts, right? It's a war on your masculinity as a man, politics, and the gender wars yeah. that's all it's about man right now that's what it is if you look at it and and i think it was ronald reagan said that we're well, the destruction of the united states of america is not going to happen from an external threat it will be an internal threat yeah malcolm x said the same thing so when you look at it from that perspective how are we disintegrating ourselves we're falling apart and other countries right now look at the united states and they're laughing at us they're testing our waters you got the chinese that have nuclear subs by the they're, they're coming out and the russians are coming out they're, they're by the borders they got this balloon seven days bro it flew around for seven days uh, yeah. got to the ocean and said oh we're gonna the, shoot it down now now there there is some good there, now that's very bad right if i was president that shit would have gotten shot down instantly but but I will say this though, and actually, there's some crazy shit that's coming out now too. That so, which president was it? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So this is actually this actually this balloon thing happened in the past with yeah three yeah two others two others Obama and was it Clinton? I can't remember. It was Clinton? Uh, yeah. Was it Clinton? I think so. It may, it may have been Bush. It may have been Bush. I, I can't I can't recall. I think it was Bush. I think it was Bush and yeah. it was Obama. Yeah, it, it was Obama right, and stuff. Right, yeah. Right. So so yeah, it's happened. Like they didn't do it under Trumps, but uh, but. <laughs> Because he literally would, he, like that this, dude would have that, that dude would have shot that shit. Down. He would have on live television. He's he would have live streamed it on MSNBC or some shit, yeah. shitting it down. But um, the, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I got the floor. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse <laughs> fake news. Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my god. That's what he says, yeah, man. Yeah, right. We'll shut that shit down. But I mean, it's it's kind of funny. Like I, I don't know, man. Like. I'm I'm very patriotic. I do th- like I get really I get really irritated with people. Even like I, we have friends and stuff that are like that are really anti-American and stuff like that. But like the countries they go to are kind of pieces of shit. I mean, it's like one little place that they go to, and it's all the foreigners with money go. If we're just being fucking honest, I mean, like, America's a great place, but we're 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 self-sabotaging ourselves now. Of course, but like the same same thing too. Like, but I, you travel to other places, and it's not that great either. No, like, they're, they're no. Full of, like there's this cl- there's actually this really big meme that was going around that's funny. Like some uh, what, what happened. Oh, this guy left Michigan or something, then went off to Europe, and then he was like, "There's less services for the like." He basically left because he wanted to go to the lefty uh, paradise of another of a like um, of of, uh, of some Euro countries, and he went there, and he's like, "Bro, there's no wick, there's no nothing for the poor." Like he's like, "Bro, it's like it's more. There's more shit. There's actually more shit to help the poor in in Michigan than there was in in Europe." And and like there was all, like it was just such a culture shock. Like they were just he thought it was gonna be like a lefty paradise or something like that. Yeah. It, it's not like. It's it's crazy. Well, a lot of countries you don't see the homeless, right? You don't right. see the you know they they, I think they have solutions, but you know our solutions aren't working here. 
Yeah. Whatsoever. No, Black Hole Joe said the three o the three o four thottery is slowly creeping into Mexico. And, bro, all women, all ho. I mean, okay, let me say this right. Uh, 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 all women, all women are trife. There we go. The three o fours. Like, bro, dude, it's just like you would go to small. Like, I remember, bro. <clears throat> hey, you know yeah. where you know where the Western culture is really impacting a country right where? now? It's changing. Is India. Really, dude? If you look at the, if you, it's speaking of the three well, you're, you're in the text I, I, too. Yeah, Well, yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. but uh, but I'm in the I'm in the uh, ma- the manosphere, right? That's what we talk about. But check it out. So so you know you go to England you, or the UK, Britain, right? You go to Australia, you go to Canada, you go to US. We all have the same issue, right? Where where women want to try to be the man, right? Okay, but it's now it's happening in India. Mm. Now you're seeing all these Indian uh, women. In, from India, being very masculine. Oh shoot! Coming out here, podcasts here and there. Power uh, women. Pa- yep. Women of empowerment. You're not empowering women because the greatest gift a woman can have is children. And they'll say that when they get older. They'll say, "My greatest accomplishment in life was not the money I made; it was my marriage, my family, and my children." But now you're empowering these women to be boss bees. And so all these podcasts are coming out from women from India, and they're they're pushing this whole Western agenda. And you're seeing it bleed in from the tech space, but it's going into India because a lot of the H-1B visa tech individuals came over here for Amazon, Microsoft, yeah. my neighbors. Maybe, maybe this is our superpower, bro. Maybe, maybe it's like, like, it's like what, you say whatever you want. The United States never backed off a of military. We've always been like a right, really right. heavy. But like, may, maybe this is how like all these countries were trying to do this fuck shit to us. And now we're like we're exporting our wokenism. Dude, I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you, look, look, there's even a podcast here, I think, with an attorney. She's an Indian gal, right? There's all these empowerments. So look at, look at all the – go out there. Look at the podcast. They're popping up left and right. And, again, nothing wrong with a woman being successful. But I keep telling people this. There's a certain level of, uh, of success at which you create as a woman where you sacrifice family. You can't have both at a high level. It just doesn't work. Yeah, it's, it's a whole trilemma when you're in college. It's like sleep, good grades – Right, social life, and I'm never, and, I, yeah. and I'm never saying as a woman, don't be successful, but don't try to have a great marriage, yeah. right? Because you're not no longer filling that role, right? right? Right. So, I really think the move is for some couples is like I I feel like it really is having a bit like I've seen businesses work, but both both people are in their fifties or like in their forties. Yeah, like I've seen that work a lot of times, but I've never seen it work when they're younger or it's like or it's like they're like. Like, I, I've even seen people get divorced a, it, owning. It, a, a, I've, I've seen people get divorced owning a fucking laundromat. It's, it's a power a, struggle. Yeah, it becomes a power struggle, right? You're the, the, the what I've seen is that both couples, the man and the woman, try to compete. Mm. She's trying to compete with him. It's like, why are you trying to compete against him instead of empowering him and leveling him up? And it's this whole woman empowerment movement, man. Like twenty, what is it? What was the year? Twenty thirty? Was it twenty thirty that fifty percent of all women are going to be? Single, unmarried, and childish. Oh yeah, yeah. It was it was a report by fuck, childless, bank, childless, childless. But it was an actual report by Bank of America to to their private investors and stuff that basically like so there was an entire Rolla talks about this all the time. There's this giant report where they pretty much did a, uh, where is some of the best places to invest money and they look at demographics and they're cat looking food. like cat food, cat food. Ca- cat food. It was just box wine. I mean, like, st- <laughs> there's a company, there, man. There's a wine. John, company. Would, wait, 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 yeah, John. Yeah. Cat food, John. 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 <laughs> we're gonna say John. Cat food, John. <laughs> so th- there's a there's actually a wine company. If I can swing it, I'll buy it one day. Th- there's a, I think I can make a fortune on this company and stuff like that. But th- there's these com- there's these certain companies that are like you want to buy over the next because they basically they fuck it. like they, the reason we leaned into it right was basically because now they have high income. They've spent basically they're just a pass through. They're, they're just a money pass through system. So the ultimate the ultimate consumer. Is a woman with money that's single? Yeah, because the money just—they don't say like, bro. It's it's bad. Like some of them are like, I've met a couple women that 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 are on that mindset. But you know why? Because they had a health problem or a health scare. What is it? It's it's very strange. Seventy-five percent of the consumers are women. Is that? Yeah, they're they're they're, 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 they're usually the ones buying. So it's not completely. So men, the men typically are the ones earning the income, and then from there they give the wife the debit or the credit card, and then they go to the store to buy stuff. So this is why they they target female consumers because they're the ones actually looking at on the shelves. Oh, this is cute. Oh, this. But it's the man's money and some of her money. That's that's. So that's why like all advertisements are are like they lean towards. They lean towards men and stuff like that. The only time it, it's negative would be like um, when you have an ad that's very negative against men, 
then you have like this is a big hash. Um, no way. What, what was it? Glade. 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 Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. No. no, no. Uh, um, the the Rangers, Gillette. 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 Yeah. Gillette basically did this right. this whole thing about like you're a fucking company for shavers for men and they and they basically shit on guys and the guys are like yo stop buying that bullshit and then their sales plummeted like seventy four percent in a month like the company was like holy fuck they're almost going bankrupt over like like that wokeism shit like. Boom. Gone. They nuked it. They're like, well, that's what Disney's doing. Yeah, go woke, go broke. Dis- Disney is, uh, there's a thing out, oh, man. Uh, hey, just on the super chat. Yes. Guys, gals, give a thumbs up. Do you like Star Wars? Start popping up on the super chat. Yeah. You like Star Wars, right? They're trying to, they're, they're talking about, Disney's talking about having a gay Luke Skywalker. What? They're, what? <laughs> I swear to God, what? bro. What? I saw that today. What? They're 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 doing research and, and coming out with talking and discussing whether wait, Luke wait, Skywalker. Wait, 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 wait. What the fuck are we talking about right now? Disney, bro. Everything Disney's putting Luke, out. Gay now. Luke Skywalker. Yeah, bro. One hundred guys. Look it up. I, I swear to God, I'm looking at it today. I'm like, what the frick are what you? The guys fuck are you doing? Wait, what are you talking? Wait, wait. Oh, you're freaking my brain up. Wait, what? There's a discussion whether he was gay or not now, and they're 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 in talks about maybe possibly moving that into the future movies that he was he's gay luke skywalker how's that how's that how's that going for all the star wars fans bro yeah we both kind of this shit no no absolutely not haram haram on that shit no yeah yeah i see of course luke skywalker is gay confirms mark hamill and blah 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 the chosen one half they're talking about disney star wars leans toward disney star wars leans towards exploring luke skywalker uh was never intended to be gay or bisexual or a member of the LGBT community, but they're talking about it or something like that. Dude, oh my. This is the same bullshit like what's going on. And shout out to my, like, the only real, this is the only real billi- female billionaire in the world, J.K. Rowling. Shout out to my girl. Yeah, there you J- go. So, J- so J.K. R- J.K. Rowling from, from Harry Potter, she's legitimately the only female billionaire. Legitimately, because she created something, she had a business, a company, movies, merchandise. She legitimately has. She's like probably the only female billionaire on the planet. J.K. Rowling that made that made um, Harry Potter. They're giving her shit because she won't. She won't. She's not. Oh she, yeah. They, they, so there's this whole game that came out. This MMORPG of like of like you can you can you can. It's like a it's a game of like of like of Harry Potter. You can choose your own thing. You can choose you know if you're Hog, you know, Hogwarts and you can choose if you're Slytherin and all this other stuff. And she would not kowtow to like making characters. She was, I'm not gonna make 80 percent of the game fucking lesbians and fucking like like you know and all this LGBTQ stuff. And then now they're trying to flame her. Another game is the best selling game in the fucking America right now. Like people are just actively buying the game just in pro- in open protests against like the wokenism because JK is not backing down on this shit of like yo I'm not gonna make a character gay just to be gay. You know I like, like it. I like like it. If it ma- she's like I, I'll I'll do it if it makes sense. He's like like. They, they, she even said like they forced her hand a little bit with like um, what was his name um, Dumbledore. They they Dumbledore. They made him like he's gay and stuff, and he's like Gringle. Well, it, it kind of works out. It's fine. Like I'm not mad about that one. But like when you try to insert it too freaking much, or go back, yeah, and change the story. It's crazy. It's right? crazy. Change the narrative. Like yeah, Twilight Zone. She doesn't like the so- trans shit. Yeah, because they're pushing that stuff. Like like no matter what ends like. Bro, this is my channel. This is why it's, like, you have to own your own TV channel, you guys. <laughs> no, no, no. But, but here, here's my thing. Yeah. If you start a new series, great. But don't go back and change the narrative just to try to make people yeah. happy, right? Yeah. That, that, I lose respect, right? So, so, however, not everyone is on board and make it loose. So, anyways, they're talking about it in here. Anyways, the bottom line is this. Like, when you change the narrative for, for this uh, a, a group yeah. just to feel happy, it, it I, like, why? Yeah. Go forward with a new new movie series what? or a new cartoon yeah. or you know they're doing it with every character. Disney's going back changing every character. It's so it's so bo- like there's <laughs> like okay, like I don't mind them doing like a Coco or something like okay they're because I get it they're trying to cash in on the Latino thing and something and all this other stuff and that the, like there's some things where it's okay but then they go too fucking far you know it's 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 just backtracking or like 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 recently right they started doing the whole thing about um what's a chick from the office uh, she she redid Velma or like Scooby Doo and stuff like that we're like there's no Scooby Doo he's not even born yet uh they made like. She's like the whole story is about Velma, except she's a fucking cunt in the movie. And then like yeah. Fred, Fred, the white guy, is like a fucking asshole or some shit just because he's white. And so it's like, it, it, bro, it's wild. Like, like I had people in my in my household trying to watch that shit. I turned that I was like, get that bullshit off my TV right now. 
Yeah, what was that? What was that? Uh, remember Gina Carano? She got fired. Yeah, for what? Uh, what did she do? She has a back backlash on Twitter over some uh, Mandalorian, right? The Mandalorian, yeah, 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 because she made a statement, um, and now she's not. She she got let go, right? I can't remember what the statement was. She shared a controversial political opinions on social media, and they fired her. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's some bullshit right there, right? You know, and 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 and, and for what? Yeah. To try to appease a certain community? I'm, right. I'm totally against that. Yeah, me too. I mean, it's 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 crazy. I mean, look, even Karn. Karn's saying, like, JK's still a weirdo lefty, but at least she's not that. Yeah, like, it's okay if you're a lefty and stuff. So it's just like when, like... Why hey, you, look, I don't have no problems how you vote, like, but just don't go off look, the farm. Even I'm a little lefty on this. It's like, if, if you really... Are like that? That's fine. be that. That's okay. I'm not that's, okay. With I don't it. care about I don't that. Care. It's like it's like what you eat doesn't make me shit. Like I don't. It's, but imposing things on people that, that where you try to tell me that you're a frog. Yeah, I'm. A, you need to address me as a frog. I'm not doing it. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. I mean, Jordan Peterson went down that whole. That's that's what started Jordan Peterson. They're trying to get rid of his license. Yeah, because because he he won't address people to fit their political narrative of hey, and you need I'm a uh, you need to address me as a sheep or uh, sheep. Uh, you know, I'm <laughs> like, dude, I'm not doing that. I'm not yeah. doing that. It, it, we're definitely not doing that. But you know, this. I mean, I, I you know the people watching right now are, are agreeing with us and stuff, but. This is this is kind of crazy. Like the, now there, there's a witch hunt, so they're going after Twitch streamers who are who are, who are like there, there's a there's a really nice couple where like these guys are like rated G, really nice couple. Like this is just like um, uh, people in their late twenty couple and something like that. You know, young young uh, young couple. They're playing the game and then basically any basically there's these mob of woke people attacking people to get them banned and they've gotten people banned and stuff like that. So now people in protest are not playing the game, so it's backfired on them. Now more people are playing the game. You know, try just being like fuck that shit. Like, there's not enough. You can't take us all down, basically. Wow. Yeah, it's the, the tw Twitch is such a shithole, bro. Like, Twitch is gonna go to fuck. Like, Twitch is owned by Amazon and stuff. It they've run that shit to the, like the wokeism and like they're so woke, but it, but and they're against all these things except when it is showing your fucking pussy on stream. Like they'll they'll give they'll, like you say one thing they'll ban they'll they'll ban take away yeah, your channel yeah but like you, like but you're extorting your fucking your fans and shit and they'll give them, they'll give like a female content creator like seven day you, you know you know what's funny about that so <laughs> I just was talking about that the other day Instagram yeah IG so you know how you get paid for reels yeah I was course. getting paid for reels right they just added that thing recently yeah yeah, yeah. and I was doing pretty good and then all of a sudden uh, you know I was monetizing my IG and then all of, of a sudden I went in and it's like all these reels were doing four million views. You know, two point seven million, three million, one million, and it's like, wait, I'm not getting paid for it. It's like, sorry, um, this does not, um, uh, this this video is not a, pr it, it violates our our, our guidelines. Yeah. And I'm like, well, why why would how does it violate your guidelines? Right. It, you let me post it, so it didn't violate your guidelines there. But all of a sudden, when I when I want to make money off of it, it violates your guidelines. And then I click on click here to see why. Sorry, this isn't available. It's like you're. Vi how and then I went to you know get the blue check yeah, mark yeah. and they're like sorry your your topics uh, and I said wait fresh and fit has a blue check mark, right? Kevin Samuels had had a blue check mark and so they they target certain certain uh, um, um, pages yeah. and it's like they they won't now they don't want to pay because I'm getting a lot of views right four million views on one reel yeah they're just eating up they're and they're like the oh you're violating our guidelines it's like well if I really violated your guidelines you'd remove that reel but you haven't. Right. But you just don't want to pay me on it, and then you're trying to find a reason why you don't like the content. And now you, will, when I go check to see why, it won't tell me. Oh, well, sorry, this isn't available. Right? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So it's, it's so stupid. It's so, like, yeah, man. It's. I mean, it's stuff. I, and I think every it's stuff that needs to be said, but it's just like it's 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 just crazy, man. And then like, yeah, man. This is why you had to level yourself up. You have to get yourself to a point where you can become kind of like. Like kind of how Andrew Tate was trying to do it, just he brought so much heat on himself. But brought like, a lot of heat, right? Brought a lot of heat. He should have bailed the first time when he went yeah. to jail. Even though I do respect the guy, and I, but like people, I think there is people in his organization probably doing some shady shit. Yeah, you know, man. You know, but you know, you know he, they're going to get him. They didn't get, they didn't get Capone. Uh, well, they, they, they have they to. Got him for, you know, they have to have him there. They can keep him for, for sixty days, uh, but they haven't found anything on Andrew, um, and now it's a human rights violation. But the 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 law over in Romania is that they, if there's any kind of uh, foul player, they can find any evidence. They they can keep the person up to sixty days before it goes to trial. So they did the first thirty days. I think uh, mid, uh, I think February like 
27th or something is the next 30 days. Yeah. And then at that point, if they don't have any, they have to let him go. I guarantee you he's gone. Oh, he's going to Saudi Arabia. He's gone. He, yeah. uh, 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 maybe Dubai? You think he'll go to Saudi Arabia? Yeah, Dubai, Saudi Arabia. He won't go to Saudi Arabia. Like, that's too, that's too, too strict. Yeah. Because, I mean, you, you know, yeah. like, who's, who's that famous soccer player that's not married? Uh, that they, let him, they let him and his girlfriend live together, but they made an exception to the rule in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Who, who is that? Ronaldo? Yeah. yeah Ronaldo? Ronaldo, yeah. But, but they made an exception for him. But that would be too – Tate would go there. I think he'd go to Dubai. I don't want to talk about someone's religion and stuff, but like, it's just like, I, I don't, I didn't truly really believe someone went like, oh, no, I think it's easier. Basically, I'll say this. It's easier if you're, as you know, you, you convert to Islam you're to get to Muslim to get a citizenship or a, or a green card right. in a country. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. But how do they know you really converted? Let's well, talk about that. Social media. I mean, it's that. Like I bet you there's deals in the background side. Like like if you promote it, and so, like like Andrew Tate turning, tur- you know, um, preaching that you know like Haram, Haram's not become a meme now. Like I fuck what it, it two, is. Two year, it two is. Year, a year ago I wouldn't have been saying Haram. Now we're saying Haram as a, that's like I, I wouldn't even know that. Like legitimately, like I've never I never once in my life had a, like. Ever in my life have I ever thought of like converting or ever even thinking about that shit ever in my life? <laughs> no, I've never, and I'm, I still am not. If I'm being honest, no, no. If I still am not and shit, like it, it's it, it. But I it, mean, like, yeah. look. At the end of the day, I think that in this, I don't know, we're talking about religion now. Well, here we go. <laughs> I was raised a hit Catholic. the like buttons, hit the notification yeah, I, bell. Yeah, I, I was raised a Catholic, and then I became a, a non-denominational Christian, baptized, whatever. But at the end of the day, I think we all go to one God somewhere, yeah. and and then maybe even God was freaking alien, right? Like at the end of the day, it's like you know we were created in the image of man. It's like what did we look like before? Like you can't tell me. I was just on this other podcast. You know, there's four fifty fifty five hundred planet X X. What is it called? There's fifty five hundred planets outside of our solar system that exist. Yeah. And then there's all these solar systems that they find like 450 a month. You can't tell me there's a, a, a not an advanced civilization somewhere. out there somewhere. And we see all kinds of stuff, you know, and it's like all this evidence is popping up now. And it's like, you know, we probably were like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to create uh, life on this planet, you know, and yeah. we're going to create a religion. And you're, we're going to be your God. I'm just saying like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I believe there's a God, but when you get stuck in a religion so much, like Christianity religion, like they get rid of the book of Enoch, they yeah. got rid of that whole book, threw it out. You know, there's they, all they don't these... even really even listen to the Old Testament anymore either. No, there's all these flaws. And so I'm not beating up any type of religion, but I, I you know, if they say, do you believe in God? 100% there's yes. a God. I don't know who he is, what he is or where he came from. Or, but when you get so focused on a religion, I feel like that can be a bad thing. Right. Like have it's the whole thing just let people do what they want to do right. but there is like there is you have to have some there is some lines you know like yeah yeah for, yeah, you, know, yeah. Like you, can, have, you can't have it affect people or others outside of yourself or maybe your family that you control or something right like, like the old testament says yeah. burn witches at the stake well, yeah, yeah, well if i call you a witch and burn you i'm going to prison right right, right. not you but it, it's <laughs> <laughs> your assistant no just but kidding. <laughs> But you, are you with me? Yeah, I'm with you on that. It, 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 it's 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 just crazy. It's just crazy where we're heading right now, you know. Um, but it, you know, it, it's just, but regardless or not, I mean, the pro, if I was a government, especially these governments are really allied with that religion, right? Yeah, it, yeah. It makes sense. It's like okay, we'll use this guy as a mouthpiece, and it's, I, he's he's converted people, and, and nothing wrong with that. But no, there's nothing wrong with that. But people are very easily influenced. Very easily influenced. And again. I have no 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 shame or hatred towards Andrew Tate or anybody yeah. like 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 I said and I talk about all these people um, that are in the in the manosphere if you yeah. will right red pill yeah. like I feel like you know and again you know it's funny because everybody everybody got their knowledge from Rolo yeah shout out to him right? shout out to Rolo Kevin Samuels got his knowledge from Rolo yeah. right and then, yeah. everybody and so I give props to him so people are like oh you know where are you making this shit up no it's Rolo's fault no I'm just kidding <laughs> but but mystery <laughs> but Rolo's also not responsible for the actions of people that right. take his book and do harm with it or not harm with it right so you know Andrew Tate and 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 uh you know Kevin Samuels and Fresh and Fit and you know Michael Sartain all these people we've all learned the basics from 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 Rolo, right? Yeah. Initially, but it's like when I look at individuals, I might not agree with everybody across the board 100%, right? right. Maybe more Rolo than anybody, maybe Jordan Peterson, right? But like uh, I go to Andrew and say, eh, I'm 95, 94%. 
right? Kevin Samuels, 93%. So there's things I don't agree with, but the majority I do. Yeah. But when you, when you comes to influence, look how many people that Andrew Tate influenced. And I, th- I think he has generally done a very good thing for society. A he lot. has. He it, has. Tremendously. He, all he's doing at the end of the day is he's, he's it, trying to instill in young men, which I try to do, is be a man, try to, try to carve out your future, and, and, and do what's right as a man. Right. That's all I'm trying to do, right? I'm not trying to – I'm not a misogynist. I love women. I don't hate women. I'm yeah. not prejudiced against women. But you're, you're fighting these battles. You're fighting the wokeness. You're fighting the left. You're fighting uh, the feminists, you know, and, and nobody wants us to win. Yeah. You know, we're going to be wearing pink. And, 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 you know, we're going to be the passenger cars here in the next right. five years if we don't change. So. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, the man knows how to go viral for sure. Yeah, no, but he was, it's just, it's just, it just kind of, it just is what it, like, I, if he does get away from this, I'm pretty sure, I mean, I don't know. He's going to, I mean, we'll have oh, he's to. he's gone. He's Casper. I mean, yeah. I don't think he's Casper the ghost. No. But he will be, <laughs> this is like, what was that? What was that? Oh, man, there was a show with Jessica Alba. What was it called? Uh, Dark Angel, Jessica Alba. I've never seen it. No. Okay, that's where Jessica Alba was like when she's like in a, a superhero cat suit, right? That's yeah. when when I saw Dark Dark Angel, Jessica Alba I was like, oh man, that's the that's the actress that I want to be with, right? Yeah. But there was this the guy that worked with her was like a handicapper in a wheelchair, and he'd have these messages that go out on the internet, and it would just be his eyes, and he'd be talking, right. but you didn't know where he was. Andrew's gonna be that guy from you know the dark angel where he will be out there on social media, but he won't tell anybody where he's at. He'll show up in places. Yeah. He'll be like Bulzerian a little bit now. Like he's hit, hit that top level of fame and now it just does what he wants to do anyway. Like, right. Right. It's, it's going to be that stuff. But problem. he's not going to be, I don't, I don't think he's going to be in, in obviously won't be in a West. He's not going to be a Romanian. He won't be in the United States. He'll be in Dubai. I think yeah. I'm, my bets Dubai. Or somewhere like that. Yeah, it's gonna be some, or maybe somewhere in East Asia or something like. That. It's gonna be somewhere in Asia. It's gotta be somewhere where he's got autonomy and stuff like that and power. Escape the Matrix and all this right, stuff. Right, right. You know the whole brand and stuff. But um, yeah, I wish him luck. I hope nothing ends up happening to him. And I bet if something happens to him while he's in jail or something, like we all know, like what's you know, come on. And Tristan like, Tate just had a kid three weeks ago. Yeah, and couldn't even see. I think it was his daughter. I think daughter. I can't yeah. even see his daughter. Can't even see his daughter. That's crazy, That's, bro. That is. That makes me crazy. furious, dude. I'd be so mad. And like, I feel like they don't give we don't people don't give Tristan Tate enough like daps. Dude, that guy's a smart man. Dude, he's smart as he's hell. Such a smart guy. Like he's so he's such a he's so wise and shit too. Like I've heard a lot of stuff he said. He's like he's like very he's the calmer of the two. Yeah. But like he's said some really sage, beautiful things. Yeah. And stuff yeah. Like that. I, really, I mean, I, you know, I really shout out to him. It. I hope yeah. Tristan's okay as well. Everybody says, oh, you know, poor Andrew Tate. What about Tristan? Right. Yeah. You got to remember the brother's there too, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I really want to do an interview with Tristan. Honestly, like Tristan's a really like smart dude and stuff like that and like but like they're very two different levels of the like of the coin you know what i mean but like it's great you know well they'll never i don't think they'll ever come to the states oh no no it'd be it'd be something like that. i mean i mean if, if i they had get a, off I, the plane here and get arrested yeah i just fly out to them <laughs> right right but um yeah man it's kind of hey chats if you guys have any questions for black ice this is your chance right now man Uh oh here we go like you want, this man you want to level up here you go black ice is going to help you out man i gotta sit up for this one yeah. i get some good questions though yeah, definitely man can you, hey, can you bring the red? Can you bring me a Red Bull? Yep. Yeah, thank you. Wow, here, you're, you're Red Bull drip, man. IV drip. No, <laughs> they got sugar free Red Bull. Yeah, they got sugar. Of course, yeah. We have exactly two. Okay, thank you. Please, sir, kind sir, engineer. Sheesh. M- I'm gonna call him the Mick yeah. engineer. All right, hit a Pepe. Hit a Pepe real quick, and otherwise, wait for questions. Tristan Tate holds the Red Bull world record. <laughs> yeah, he, he drank the most Red Bulls on camera of all time. What? How many was it? <laughs> I fucking, it must have been like 12 or 10 of them or something. <laughs> Shout out to Tristan Tate, my G, bro. That's fucking dope, dude. I love that. <laughs> yeah, man, that's crazy, though, coming up uh, and yeah. in, in talking in you this. Know, Go ahead. The, the Tate say something, uh, I think it was, I'm not sure it was Andrew or Tristan, but I think it was the way, like, there's something that he says, like, 
you already know what to do. like if you think this is the like this is such a fucking deep it's so it's very shallow and deep at the same time it's very it's very it, it, you could hear it and you could just go over your head but like you already know what to do like miguel i want to lose weight i want to lose weight let's just say me I'm so, and i do I, i'm trying to lose weight right now because i'm i'm working i just got third day my third workout finally i'm back nice. i'm back on the grind nice. guys. third day um let's just say i was like asking like i really want to lose weight you already know what to do oh absolutely no you, you, like no, no no you already know what to do you're just not doing it. Like, no, I want to be rich and successful. You already know what to do. You already know what to do. It's so, bro, that was something, like, it's so, but there, now, there, now well, the, ca the caveat here is if you're young and, like, you, you're impressed, like, but once you've gotten to 25, 20, you, you kind of have already built up the base and stuff, like, then you know what to do. Like, I feel like a lot of young kids, they can make tons of mistakes. Like, like, they, like they, But they have the most opportunity I know. to make so much money, right? And this is where the wisdom comes in. Right. People are like, well, oh, you think you know everything? No, I'm wiser. I've been around longer. I've seen, I've made all the mistakes you're about to make and the ones you're not. And I'm sitting there telling you the shortcut. Here's the cheat code, right? <clears throat> Even in dating and life, everything, man. I was like, man, if I, 25 years old, I thought I knew everything. Man, I came in the military. I got out of the military. I thought I was all this. And I hit the real world. It's like, whoa, I don't know shit. And then every day, like I learned from you, wisdom is from, experience and years of learning right yeah. it's not doesn't mean i'm smarter i'm wiser right like you know that old chinese dude in the kung fu movie with the long white beard <laughs> right that's that's <laughs> drunken fist right yeah, right yeah, 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 yeah you yeah. know what i mean that's why people go are oh, you double og old guy original gangster right yeah, yeah i've been around a minute man i've been i've been around over half a century Sheesh. think about that yeah right and so when somebody like, oh you have no clue bro that's when the that's when the parent conversation comes in yeah. when i was your age i walked uphill both ways to school in the snow right? right that that shit used to piss me off but then you get older you're like no i really did because these people are going down the road don't go down that road dude you you know what it comes down to dude delayed gratification people hate that people hate that term and then i heard it the other day it's a racist term i'm like what the hell are you Del talking about delayed gratification. that's a white Wait, uh, yeah. that's a racist term Somebody said it was racist. I'm sorry. I made all my money off of delayed gratification. What are we, the fuck are we talking? Then I'm the biggest racist in the world. Shout out to my... No. <laughs> so, yeah. So, when it comes to questions... and people, gang, we up. Yeah. When it comes to questions, man, I'm going off of history. Right. I'm going off of what I grew up with, right? The OGs, right? The old guys. You know, people... Remember, I was born in 1969, bro. Sheesh. The best year ever. The best year ever, man. Right? I, I was a hippie baby, man. <laughs> summer I came out. Summer, summer of love. love. Yeah. That's why my name was so weird, right? Like, so at the end of the day, the 70s, 80s, I saw everything, man. Elvis died. Oh, my God. That was 1980 or – no, it was 1970. No, what was it? It was uh, – On the toilet, right? 78. Yeah. 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 He, and I was at the pool. My mom came out crying. I saw all this shit, right? Hey, hide under your desk, you know, in case we get nuked from the Russians. Like, I lived through that shit, right? Like, what, what's I going to do? Hide under yeah. your desk, right? That's not going to do shit, it, no, right? No, no. So even the airplane thing, put your knees between your, that, that's actually to break your neck on a fall so you die faster. Yeah. Can you I, believe that shit? Like when you're, when you're in a plane, they tell you to put your, like, when, like in, in, a, in a crash, put the, put the oxygen on your head, on your mouth, and then put your head between your knees. When you hit, when you actually crash into anything, what'll happen is it'll instantly snap your neck so you die fast. Dude, that's, I just, I just saw the movie real, Plane last night. That's the real reason. Because if you were if you were up straight like this, you would live. But they were like, well, if you might be in a situation where you drown and you die, but like, but, but I'd rather have that chance of like trying to make it. Uh, that's why I don't put trying to take down. my chances. That like, <laughs> dude, no, anyway, I'm good. Yeah, you know why they want you dead too? Because if you happen to survive these crashes, sue. you could sue the fuck out of. Them. You know why they don't add this? You know they could very easily add. Like, I, add I, this? I think you just got. I think you just got axed off of every airline. <laughs> you can't fly. <laughs> I fly private now. JSX. <laughs> but, but like, like Dana, White, it, it, Dana White's right next door. You can just ask him. He'll yeah, fly everywhere. Yeah, he'll fly me everywhere, man. But like, you're in a plane. They could definitely add that. They could just, they actually have things they could slide out compartments and then have like parachutes. If things got really bad, but then the, the, loss, like, the lawsuits that could happen. Like, that's crazy to me that you can't like just do shit just to try to save the most amount of people. That's why they just, when 9-11 when happened. They um the reason they the they took over the plane is because they were torturing some people in the back and they opened the door. Now the pilots are instructed to doesn't matter who's who's getting killed in the back, they will not open that door ever because they'd rather let like 10, 15 people die in the plane, but there's still people surviving. Yeah, but you know? they said that last plane that crashed in Philadelphia or Indiana or somewhere had like, like I can't F remember F fifteens next to it and shit like that. 
Remember that? that no, was a, uh, the fourth plane. There was a fourth plane. The two hit the buildings, and Pentagon, the one hit the Pentagon, Pentagon. and there, there, was was one. One. there was a fourth one. There was another one. It was flying along, and then it had everybody that was there was local. Like, yeah, there was. It got shot down, and then a German, even a German news station, they were getting reports from people that witnessed it, and they say, yeah, it got shot down. And then at the end, oh no, it crashed. What? Now, now think about this. How would you crash a plane if they didn't get to the guys? Why would the plane crash? I mean, there's all this weird shit. Nobody answered it, right? Hey, shit happens. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it was it, pigeons, bro. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, like you, have, you understand, the amount of seagulls it takes to crash one of those things is just one. Bro. No. <laughs> man, now you're, now you're stretching, man. Oh, yeah. Herc has a great question, man. He's like, no way this guy's 54, man. What is 50, your, what, 53. 53. Yeah, put some respect on the name. Uh, 53, what are you doing to take care of yourself? Uh, good question. Um, I don't do drugs. I know that sounds boring. Haram. Um, not that I haven't smoked weed in the past, but I, you know, here's the thing with weed. Uh, somebody said this. Yeah. Andy Fraselli said, "Look, I think it was him. I think it was him." Yeah. He said, "Yeah, I do weed, but I have fuck you money. Mm. I can't function the next day, bro. Right. I can't get up. I work out. I used to work out really hard. Now I don't. I just kind of work out medium." Um, full body or what we talking about yeah yeah i do you know i'll go in i'll do chest i'll do biceps and legs my, my girl competes man she's 26 years, or 30 years old yeah i met her when she was 26 sweetheart, sweetheart. uh fit Bloomin. iris right on instagram but she uh uh she's a competitor yeah but so I answer your question only off topic I, I i don't drink once in a blue moon with travis somewhere i'll have a vodka and sugar-free red bull yep. but i'm not a drinker i have no alcohol in the house i try to eat healthy but the biggest thing is when i was working I do not let a job stress me the fuck out. Mm. It's that anxiety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? Hear me out. Remember, you're, no company's loyal to you. You're a number. The biggest scam is that I, that, that's out there is this statement. Well, I want to be a full-time employee because I want job security. There's no fucking – it's an oxymoron yeah. statement. And so I was always a serial contractor, 1099 S-Corp. I contract, why don't you go full-time? It's a scam. Look at all these people that got laid off. I see them on LinkedIn. 50,000 people. Oh, I was there for seven years. You thought you were, you were yeah. locked and loaded? Can, and locked can, in? Let me ask you this because you're a, court, a, a, a recruiter. Okay, I really want to ask you this question. Like, Give me an honest – Like, okay. Do most people who – like? They, they want a nine to five and stuff like that. Is it because they're lazy and they don't want to have their own business? They, they just want to like get the check and go home. Is that really like, cause the, it, that's what it, from the, I've always been either. I've worked for my family. No, 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 no. It's and own my own. It's the, I've it, never, I've never worked for somebody else. It's a, my it's a, there's two prongs to that. Okay. Two, two. Please, please. It's how they were raised in it. And it's a personality trait. It's playing the safe role, mm. right? Cause the safe role is go out, get a good education with that education, get a good job. Buy a house, have a family, and 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 ride off in the sunset. Work the nine to the five. The for sure, the for sure path. They want to play the safe route. They're not risk takers. It's a different. It takes a different type of personality, and it also takes a person that's independent from their family as an independent thinker. Because like my son, he he works at this podcast studio. He he does some. He does mm-hmm. my podcast and everything. He's nineteen year old. Dad should I go to college. Chad. Yeah. What? Chad on the way. Man. <laughs> I said, Dad, should I go to college? I'm like. I had a hard time telling him to go get a degree. Mm. What's that degree going to do for him? But put him in debt. I'm not saying there's nothing yeah. wrong with a degree, right? Yeah. Are you with me? No, no, I'm, I'm with. I'm with you. I just don't want like if I had a son, and I would tell if he was just at like, like he's like dad. If he was for real, like dad, I want to go to college because I just want to like hang out for for like four years. I'd be all right, fine. Like because he's because he knows it's bullshit. Right, 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 right. But he doesn't want to go. There we go. Okay. So I'm different. like, okay. He said, "What should I do?" I said, "You need. I don't want to do. You need to do what makes you happy." But you need to find something you're passionate about and stick with that. But I, I support him. He wanted to know about crypto. I said, talk to Miguel. You're talking to the wrong dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, put, I told him to invest in some coins on coin. <laughs> Dad, I lost money. I said, I told you to talk to Miguel. Don't talk to me. But here, to answer yeah. your question. <laughs> I think Gala was like a two cents. <laughs> I would have doubled, I would have tripled his fucking money. No, no. To, to, answer, to, to answer your question, man, yeah, yeah. some people just, you cannot, look. You can't instill and motivate somebody to take a risk. Yeah. I've taken risks my whole life. And you know what? Some of them pan out, some of them haven't. Right. Do I, have I hit a home run? I, I, I've been on third base. I don't think I've hit a grand slam yet. I'm still going at 53. People are like, what are you doing? You're li-. I walked away from, I walked away. I had a client I fired yeah. two weeks ago. Guaranteed 14400 a month from one client. Yeah. I fired him. 
and this recession because I didn't need the stress and the anxiety. Answer the guy's question. I don't need the bullshit, man. Yeah. I'm too old to deal with your drama, right? So for me, that was that's the answer. When you work a job, remember, you're only a number. So just take it. When you go to a job, don't drink the corporate Kool-Aid. Drink the water. Right. Don't buy the farm. Just say, okay, I'm here. I'm getting a paycheck. Do great. Don't try to be Michael Jordan because that's expected the whole time. Right. Do a good job. But remember, you're only as good as your paycheck, right? Now, back to your why do people want to be workers or jobbers, I call them, yeah. is because they're not risk takers. My, I got a friend who I've known for uh, since 96. He came to, from Texas. He worked at the agency. I interviewed him. We've been best friends ever since. He's not necessarily a risk taker. Right. He's not a risk taker. He plays the safe route. Now he's he's made some good investments. He made he went to work at Amazon. He made some money. Sold a house for a million. He's He's doing okay. Doing okay. He's doing okay, okay. right? But he's not really that entrepreneurial type, right? Something it's something in personality. It's in the water. It's yeah. The thing, I mean, I I, it's that whole thing. Like now that like (laughs) now there's this whole thing where like um, it is easier to be in an industry if you have somebody in the family that's already in the industry. Mm. It's, it's that classic. Like, right... This is why I'm so adamant in trying to get people into crypto is, like, right now, the, there's there's no diploma. There's no nothing. There's the business... Are being <coughs> like, right now, in 20 years, you will need to probably know somebody to get in. In 20 years. Yeah. Not, not right now. But we, but we got a 10-year runway. It's beautiful. But when, the, when, 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 when America was founded, right, everybody owned something. And yeah. I'm not referring to slaves. It's unfortunate. <laughs> I'm not referring to slaves, okay? Because that's a bad uh, tragedy. It is yeah, what it is, okay? Yeah. Uh, only 10% of the black people in, in America were free, and there was an, only 10% in the North. But it's bad. But everybody owns something. Yeah. And, and the thing with employees in the trade, when the Industrial Revolution kicked off, that's when they said it, we need to create these universities and create colleges and trades so these people can work in our factories. Yeah. But before then, everybody owned a business. Right. Everybody owned Every, something. They own a shingle. I mean, look. Yeah. There's there's poor Hispanics that are on the corner selling stuff on the corner. They're a business owner. Yeah. They're taking a risk, right? But but what happens is you get comfortable. Oh my everybody's got a degree, so I'm gonna go get a degree. Nothing wrong with it. But you yeah. know what? You're gonna this one, I cannot sit I, I remember I go get a job and I, I remember this clear as day. It was a company called Color Control and Redmond. Okay. And I got this job. I got out of the army. I didn't know what I was going to do. And uh, Nima Marcus, they, they did the, ma- the, 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 the catalogs. And we're doing the color uh, machines for yeah, the catalogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this guy came in. He goes, you know what? You got a lucky opportunity here at Color Control. He said, if you work here for 20 years, you can get my job. I looked at his job. And what he had, I didn't want. What I want, he didn't have. And I can't sit there at a job for 20, 30 years and, and come out with the, the outcome to barely survive. Right. You want to th- thrive. I'd rather take a risk yeah. because if I fail, it's my fault. But, man, I'm telling you, man, I cannot be at the same job. That's why now in the tech space, the average length of a job is 18 to two months because they get recruited out. They go somewhere else. So it's just a lot of, like, tree hopping or a little, like, Well, yeah, yeah but it's, it's the, if you look at the software engineer in the tech space, so go look at the resume. Go look at LinkedIn. Go type in software engineer and, 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 and uh, San Francisco. Two years, 18 months, two years, two and a half years, yeah. 15 months. Right, because somebody says, hey, we're going to recruit you for 30K more. Right. Yeah. And, and now I'm working from home. Yeah, and I, and I got develop, I know developer buddies of mine that's got, like, <laughs> that are they got three or four jobs making like half a million dollars and but they're 1099 they're 1099 ers yep right yep, exactly yep. and so that's why i say always try to work for yourself and if you have a job create some on the side where you can eventually walk away um you know a side rev- a side hustle right. whether you're doing code for somebody else or like like hey miguel i want to do a franchise of what you do yep i'll give you five percent can you help me start a uh a courseware development program yeah, yeah. and teach people in Brazil how to invest in crypto. And I'll give you 5% of this franchise. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. So, so that's, you know, in business for yourself, but not by yourself. McDonald's, Ray Kroc. Right, right. Now, Valen's got another question for you, man. Black Ice, what are your best methods you found to expanding your network? And how did you meet Miguel? Thanks for coming on the stream, G. Man, I, I'd go hang out in places where people are doing what you want to do. Mm, 
Okay. Right? There's the eight cigar lounge in, in Vegas at, uh, uh, at the Resort World. Uh, Baccarat Cigar Lounge at, at, at uh, Bellagio. I met you here coming and going through, yeah. the, through the, the podcast studio, but I think I messaged you, didn't I? So I, th- I think what happened, if I remember right, it was like, yeah, you, mes- you messaged me first because you had known that I was in the Pussy Paw studio. I think it's a, we, we did a stream with Sartain where I was somewhere with Sartain there. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then, and then you hit me up and stuff, and then I and then we caught each other in the in, the, in between. Right, the right, yeah. So it's, it's that whole thing of like you put he put you put yourself like if you want to meet other podcasters, you put your, you put yourself around other podcasters. And right, stuff. right. Like I've connected here. I've never. I've like honestly, I probably would have never met you if it wasn't like if I wasn't just um, trying to expand myself well, in my business and like trying to put myself out there. You and, know? Yeah. Not yeah. only that, it's like I, I, I'm learning about crypto not as aggressively as I want. But it's another revenue stream and investment, yeah. right? But you have to, man, whatever you're passionate about. Like, my son plays video. I said, you know, it's joking, but my girlfriend, very attractive. And she's like, he's like, oh, yeah. I said, man, you can get on Twitch and play video games. You'll make a million dollars. It was a joke. Uh, yeah. But I was half serious, yeah, right? That's pretty serious. <laughs> uh, you know, my son's like, can I do that? No, nah, you're not that attractive. But you got to put yourself around people doing what you're doing, right? Right. So, yeah. And Jimmy, Jimmy just said, is, uh, is, is he coming to the Crypto Mindset Party? Fuck yeah, you are. When is that? So <laughs> Promote uh, it. We're, 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 right now, we're in the middle of a uh, negotiate. We're just trying to close out and get the insurance for the, for the mansion and stuff. Mm. Yeah, but right. I got a mansion if you want one. We might have to talk because it's taking forever. It's taking forever. The guy, the guy has made his millions on crypto. He's on my social media. I don't want to say his name, but I'll tell you offline. Yeah, just tell me offline. Tell but me it's offline. like he's he's in your generation or younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the last mansion I mentioned, um, the guy was the he's the guy who installed all the Bitcoin miners for uh, for El Salvador. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the guy, I we did another crypto mindset party here in Vegas and stuff, and um, we had a lot of people fly in. Shout out to the boys. But um, the the guy who owned the mansion, he basically he had a corporation where he 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 helped the country of El Salvador install all these thermal powered uh so they, they they have a thermal they have a thermal plant that's on top of a that's on the side of a volcano so thermal energy mm. and then they, they went there and fl- flew it on a boeing down there it's funny, it's such a crazy story what he told me he's like basically they took a storage container had to flip it sideways to fit it into the plane it was all full of bitcoin miners and then from there they installed it there so they have like a a, a volcano powered bitcoin miners for the for the country so, of El salvador wow are those mining machines working are they is it if you missed the ship on those i mean can you so, oh, oh, so and for normal people, no, yeah, you miss a ship. The ship's gone. Yeah, you would have to really put some money down. It's either free electricity, or yeah, it's either free electricity. That's really you it's because there's such a. Can large, you hijack your neighbors? No, you. Well, I'm, joking, you I'm joking. I'm no, joking. No, no. <laughs> yes, you can. Why? Yeah, you can hey. go right here, the extensioncourts.com. But hey, like, man, you gotta think like a thief, but not be a thief. That's right. how you make money, right? Yeah. So, like, basically, if you wanted to do it profitably, where like you always make money, it'd be yeah, you have to get free electricity. Free electricity. So, because in the average cost to mine a Bitcoin is like fourteen thousand dollars electricity, a year, a per Bitcoin, you mine. Okay, but when you say fourteen thousand dollars of, of what is what, like monthly? Yeah. Well, let's just say if you had a farm that actually created one Bitcoin a month, yeah, fourteen thousand dollars. How much? How much is one Bitcoin? Right now, let me let me. Wait, check. and how how long does it take you to get that Bitcoin? That's the other thing. It's, it depends on how big your operation is, right? So right now, uh, let me let me just go to another one. I'm making I'm making Miguel work here. Twenty one thousand dollars. Twenty. So you you'd book about like five six thousand dollars of profit, but what, what plus is, expenses plus oh. plus expenses and stuff, and then and so it's maybe two k three k clear two, two three yeah two, two clay right now. That's why when it goes down lower, it's really bad. The business can break even. Like we like the other day, we were like, we Bitcoin hit fifteen grand. Your, if your electricity costs are fourteen thousand dollars, that's not counting electricity. People you're paying, um, just the out, like just everything. How big is that farm? Oh, my, oh, that farm. Oh, pff, bigger than the studio. It'd have to be bigger than the studio. So I mean, you have to have somebody. It's a warehouse. It's a warehouse. Yeah, it's a giant warehouse. They have to build it out and stuff. I mean, I saw the pictures of it. It's pretty. It's pretty big. So you you you're putting how much money into building that out? Realistically, I think I think today you could Bitcoin mine with like two million dollars. I think two million two million dollars of investments. That shift left. That yeah, shift, that shift is left. Long that's long what, this is why I'm saying with guy like people like Bitcoin's essential. It's yeah, sort of. But it's getting, what's happening is as the cost uh, it's it's being industrialized as the cost keeps going higher and higher to actually Bitcoin mine. Only corporations, large corporations, and governments could afford. So the, go- the governments have free electricity. So okay, so so my next question. Yeah. Uh, 
sorry, I know that that guy had a question. Oh uh, no, well, well, yeah, we'll come back. But to but if I wanted to create a new mining machine for a new coin, is that doable? That that's that's doable. Yeah. So there's corporations where they they like like Litecoin right now. Litecoin hasn't had a brand new machine in fucking forever. They're running on like 2018 tech right now, but like you could do it. But the thing is, the whole industry is kind of getting away from mining. We're going to proof of stake. Which mm. is basically proof of owner. So it's like proof of money. It's really what it, what it really is. So it's like I have fifty thousand dollars of Ethereum, which is so thirty two Ethereum right now is basically fifty grand right now. Fifty thousand dollars of Ethereum. I have a node, which is like just a laptop. It runs it runs transactions, and then I get paid um, interest off that. So I get paid a dividend of eight percent. That's where we're going towards much lower cost, higher cost. I mean, uh, an initial once you once you pay the initial cost of of the, of the coins in order to mine. From there, it's passive. It's all passive income. So wow, like, it's it's a much better. I believe it's a much better system. It's fair, but it is more of like you, because it's thirty two Ethereum. It's almost like it's almost like upper middle class. What but, right? But is that better than <clears throat> only fucking corporations? You have to have like two million to really start it up. Because now some there's always like this this guy who like j- just like anything like you could have a, a very unprofitable business. Like I mine Bitcoin and I do this. Well, yeah, dude. But you're like you you literally like that's all you do, or like you have the machines there, and then you're pretty much stealing electricity or you're like, or you're getting, or you're at some place where there's like, it's very subsidized. The electricity cost is very important. There's a heating. There's also a cooling cost as well. Like uh, these machines get very hot. So if, if you don't live in a cold place, if you don't live in Iceland, there's actually, Iceland and Greenland, there's actually a lot of Bitcoin mining companies there because it, it lowers the cost to, because these machines will melt. If you don't cool them, they melt. I, I think so bad. I've got this criminal mind, but I'm not a criminal. <laughs> I mean, shout out so, to my Russians, man. Shout out to my, like, here's a famous story. There's this Russian, there's this Russian guy who was stealing electricity from this Russian school. And he, I mean, it was so much like, like, you know, of course they weren't really paying attention, but eventually they caught his ass because he was a government worker was like draining the, the, this local area of like half the electricity for like half a year. Can't, can't you like pay somebody on the back end in Alaska up at the power company, run run the machines, and they're spiffing them on the back end, hey. and then the power is free. See, I, yes, no, look, the, 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 <laughs> yeah, you're right, and like the, the, tell you the truth, like shit, I'd, I'd make a deal with the fuck, I'd make a deal with like a, a nuclear plant, and he's like, because a, most nuclear plants in the United States aren't running at full capacity anyway. They're not running at full. They, they have they have one some of the because they can never turn a generator completely off. They have to have, they have to have it on idle. Because you can't you can't turn off nu- nuclear energy. You can't turn, even the displays rods still are like irradiating. You know, ir- um, what's called um, um, irradiating. Ir- ir- irradiating still, yeah, basically. So what you could do is like, and, and some companies have done this. You could do a deal like, hey, inc- make some more electricity. Just cost you a little bit extra, and then I pay you this much per kilowatt hour, right? Right. So, so imagine like they're selling you for five cents instead of like the, I think the average price per kilowatt hour in most places is fourteen cents. Imagine they're selling it to you for four. But like, hey, they they were it cost them one. They're still making profit. That's the move right there. But like, you, but, need, to, you need to have a think tank, bro. <laughs> Literally, tell me, man, you have me as president. And you give me some power, bro. I'll turn this whole. I'll turn this bitch around. I, have, I promise I you that. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, t shares, baby, t shares. That's right, hexy mofo, t shares, <laughs> baby. There's there's passive ways to earn money. The real way to do it is like you want like most of us want to earn money without having a business. Like the thing is, it becomes a business, right? right? Now, there's nothing wrong with business. I, we created a business. Most people in crypto don't really want, like, they want to passively invest income and money, and that's totally a fine. Right. There is business, like, w- what me and Charlie do is, like, we, we teach people how to invest in crypto or how to do it for themselves and just general education and stuff like that, and people don't want to deal with that, but that's our that's our rub. That's our niche right there, right? And we're willing to do that. I'm willing, because I, I, I was, like, because I, I mean, I was profitable enough where like I didn't really even have to do what I'm doing now in crypto. Like I already, my portfolio was already enough where like I, I could just kept running my landscape businesses and just been just kept to myself. But I, I wanted to get deeper in the industry personally, right. so I was like, oh, let me just kill two birds with one stone, and that's wow. that's why I jumped into this and like the, the YouTubing and stuff just because wow. I liked it so much. That's awesome, man. Yeah, that I mean, was I, good I, shit. Yeah, I mean, I was basically already, I was already retired. I mean, basically kind of retired already just off my crypto portfolio already. Yes. Al- already, Al- and and this is like in uh, when was it? I would say like quarter one, twenty twenty one. Yeah, that right there. I could. I mean, basically, I was cool. You're done. I was cool. Yeah, I was cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I wasn't like. I was just spending like mil, like tens of millions every year, like nothing crazy like that. But like, no, I, you could have lived a comfortable. Yeah, life. super comfortable. And over time, the way I, I know it, like I'm doing my investments, like event, like one more cycle of that, and I would, I'd like basically been just. I could have been in the Bahamas. 
I want my whole nice. life. Like stuff like that if I wanted to. But the thing is, is like, bro, bro I'm like 30, I'm 31 right now. What am I going to do? Just fucking kick back. Like, like, well, you can still do it in the Bahamas. Yeah. I mean, I can, well, I don't want to be in the Bahamas <laughs> personally, but um, it, I just, I just find like, for me, it's just like, it feels weird not to be working or doing something or like, I want, I want to help people. Right. So it's like, well, let me kill, let me, this is a great way. Cause like th- through, through the red pill and stuff like we've onboarded a lot of red pill people, but I'm very proud to say, you know, we've, we've, we've actually onboarded a lot of like. Um, a lot of Latino and like African American people into crypto and stuff so, because like literally the, the, the smallest section of crypto like it's mostly white and Asian if I'm being honest most if I'm just 100 percent just being for real no just, yeah just being for real like I'm very proud I mean I've, we've onboarded a lot of like NFL players and like a lot of people what? yep NFL yep what yep so, Pri- well, we can't just they want I know you can I know. I, I, yeah privacy but a lot of people from the NFL a lot of people from Major League Baseball a lot of people from um, the you know NBA. it's funny too because like I was I was uh, coaching a uh, a rapper yeah um, who paid me a lot of money but I signed an NDA but it was you know in our space but he was <gasps> spending money on chicks like way too much money <laughs> well, right? and yeah, I was like I, you need, I, I made a joke I said you know. I'll, 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 I'll give a rough say. He's spending two to four million a year on women that he's not with. Long, no long term relationship. Yeah. No, they're not married. Two hundred to four hundred k. Two to four million a year on women. He's spending. Damn. He's well known. And I said, you know, you could put that in crypto. I, I was half joking, but I was serious. <laughs> I would have turned him on to you, but yeah, I say, yeah, you know, yeah. don't tell him it was from me. Of course, of course, you know. Course, but course, course. he yeah, was yeah. paying me. You know, we 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 talk weekly uh, on the phone, and and uh, you know, it's just it's, uh, I can't say his name, and and I'm not working with him yeah. anymore. But you know, I just told him, I said, bro, you you have no reason to spend that kind of money on right. women. I mean, right. stuff like stuff that Mike Tyson did. You know, oh, you want a BMW? Here's a BMW. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You want That's some right. slaw? Extra yeah. slaw with my chicken? That type of yeah. stuff, right? So Take he. Yeah, he was like, oh, he bought this girl a car. I said, bro, why are you doing that? And he, he said, my money's unlimited. I said, no, it's not. And that's where, it's where the conversation was south. That's where he didn't like me. Mm. I said, your music is only good to the ears of the people listening. Right? And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, you know who Curtis Blow was? You know who this guy was? Well, he, I said, that, those guys aren't around anymore. Fat Boys? Do you guys even know who Fat Boys were? No, you guys don't know who they are. They were back in the Run DMC days. Those are rappers that I listened to. And I said, your music... You're not Madonna. You're not Prince. You're not Elvis. Yeah. You're not Michael Jackson, right? Very few artists continue their music. Jay Z branched out. Yeah, he branched. He barely out. makes music anymore. P Diddy, right? They branched out. I said, you, you know, Fifty Cent got into acting. Uh, LL Cool J got into acting, right? You know, uh, uh, Ice T got into acting, right? Um, and, and my point is, is that I told him this, and so he cut ties, but he came back for a little bit. But at the end of the day, I said, bro. Excuse me, you need to invest in a crypto. Yeah. I told him that. This is before I knew you. So now that I know you, it's like, hey, you yeah. know. You got the plug. And like, if he comes and then, back, and, and, this say, is, and this is a time to put money in right now, bro, because it's down. Like, this is the low year. This is well, the low, I know. This is the low so, year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you out to lunch or dinner with my son. I'm trying to get him tied into it more than me. I'm still going to be in it. But he needs to be passionate about something other than what he's doing, right? You know what I'm saying? So, I, and that, he's and he drills me every time. It's like, Dad, what about this crypto? I say, Bro, like this is what we're talking about: the jobber to the entrepreneur. Right. And it's like, don't be afraid to ask for help. Yeah. Right. Ask questions. And he's like, well, What do I say to him? I said, Bro, just call him. I told him, I said, just call the guy. What do I say? Is he gonna? Is uh, it, it's, I promise I'll tell him to go fuck off. I, I know, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's that false evidence appearing yeah, yeah, real. Yeah, fear, yeah. fear is false evidence appearing and, and real. All he has to do is text me, hey, I'm, what's the Right, up? right. Black I, said, yeah, exactly. I, I exactly. I'll, I'll make a call. He's 19, man. It's like, dude, you know? And I, I, so far, I got him on pass. Said, Don't think about women right now. Focus on yourself. And he's like, okay, fine. So it's all about himself, right? Yeah. You know? Because like, it does have this. Actually, someone like I'll, I'll probably hook him up too with my. Uh, so I'm just for you guys to know. Actually, I'm, I might as well say it now. Um, I'm going to end up having my uh, my brother's going to end up uh, working for me pretty soon. My youngest mm. brother, mm. and so he's <sighs> just just turned 21, and he's going to go into the crypto game as well. So nice, nice and stuff. So he's going to be interning with me and stuff, and just I'm helping him out and stuff. So he actually might be uh, on my stream and stuff, reading off comments and stuff. For I me love well. that man. That's yeah, so yeah. cool. So I'll, I'll have them to hook up as well and stuff like that. Yeah, and, like, yeah, yeah. A lot of I think it'll be good, yeah. man. You see, this is how you, this is networking. This is look at that. You know, it's providing opportunities and gateways that we didn't have. Yeah, we didn't have this. 
I told him, dude, by the time you're my age, you're going to be so much richer than I was at your age. That's what you, but that's what you want. Yeah, that's what I want. Like, that's what like, you want. You I don't, don't get jealous. It. It's like, oh, my God. Oh, if I help this kid out, he's going to be fucking, by but, the but, time he's 25, he's going to have more money than me. More than poor, and it's teaching him how to maintain that and grow and yeah. not abuse it. Right. Because he earned it. Right, yep. you didn't earn it for him. He earned it himself. Correct. That's the key, right? You know, hey, I signed a, I signed a five-year contract for fifty million. Okay, you earned it with your skills and talent, but now what are you going to do with it instead of blow it? Right. Right. So this guy, your son, or I'm mean, sorry, my, my your, bro- your brother, your brother, brother. he's going to come up and he's going to follow in your footsteps, and you're a mentor. But, but he's going to make his own path. His yeah. own path. Yeah. That's I, dude. Yeah. That's, I just want, I'm going to teach him priceless. the game, make sure that he will get ripped off in this game and stuff, like, and then from there he chooses his path. That's priceless. Yeah, but that's just is, and then the, this, and then we're trying to have some version of that. We we teach you the courses and through like the, the Citadel and all these other things. It's just it's the leveling up. This is why we know how to level up and stuff. Like there is a lot of people out here. That as soon as they learn the game, they try to keep it to themselves. They, yeah, see and, that, and that's, that's it's, it's bad. It's, that's bad. That's bad because you know you you can't create. You know, it's funny in, in trying to be humble about this, um, and and you know. Wealth is created by impacting people's lives. Yes. You can't, there's not one person in the universe that's wealthy and they haven't impacted somebody's life, good or bad, right? Like, right. you know, look at, look at the Vanderbilt to the railroads. Look at, look at Bill Gates. Look at, look at Elon Musk. They've impacted people's lives and changed the way we live. But people have benefited too that have worked for them and given people yeah. jobs or opportunities, right? But that's how wealth is created. And, and you, know, you know what yeah. I mean? You, you just can't be when, a one-man show. Yeah. But it, when you worked hard and done something and, like, and, and like provided value to people, when you get the money, you don't feel bad about the money. Like they're, they're, that we're, and you're, we, showing, you're showing gratitude, but yes. you're not doing it for yourself to right. make more money. Right. Because when, you, when people find out it's about you, oh, he's only helping me because he wants, they're not going to follow your lead. Right. You're, you're a genuine guy. I know that just by talking to you, you really care about helping people. You're, that's a byproduct of your success is by being genuine and you're, you're, you're showing gratitude and not selfishness. Right. You know what I mean? No, no, I know exactly what you mean, man. Dude, like this one. This is why, like, as soon as the, the moment I met this man, like, dude, like it's been good energy, man. Like that. That's why I try to get people around. Like that was one of the things. Like I, like even when I didn't have any money and I was just work. Like I, I, I there's this loneliness I talk about sometimes, like in private to my guys, that I just say, like, I had this. There's a loneliness where I was like. There was no one for me to talk to. I couldn't talk to him. There was nobody that was even on the wavelength that I was bro, on. The ascend, I wanted to ascend up, and everyone was happy where they're at. We're just look at, they're accepting it. Look at Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. He has entourage around him. Mm. That's not what he really wants. Right? He talks about, he talks about you're either an asset or liability. Right. But, but are they really as? He has people around him because he's lonely. He has no part. He has no running mate. Right. Right? You know what I mean? He's by himself. He's he, by himself, yeah. But he has all this. But he can't teach people to have that. Yeah, there, there's a hunger and there's a drive. There's a and huge gap between pe- him and his right hand man. And and, pe- and people shit on him all the time for just this or that. But you, are, the guy, still does road work. He, like, he, like he's a good guy. I'm not. I'm not. I'm no, not, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not, but I'm just saying, like what you're talking about, like he, like he, the 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 amount of like how he still wants it. You can't. Sometimes you can't build that. Like I can show people. That, like I can. Le- I can bring you to the river to drink. But you have to drink. I can't make you drink. And remember his comment. He said uh, he said he'd be on his people, friends' yachts and all this. He goes, "That's great, but you're not teaching me how to get that, mm. right?" He goes, "That's fine, but you ain't. Uh, you, you know, if you're not helping me, I don't want to be around you." Remember he said that. And so now, but how are you helping other people? Right. You're helping people, but you're doing it out of generosity and the kindness of your heart and showing gratitude. You're not doing it to make more money. You're benefiting regardless because that's how life is. The pendulum swings both ways. Right. You know what I mean? You're going to be blessed and it's good karma. Either way you look at it, you're going to be blessed or have good karma because you're instilling confidence and bringing a young man up, your, your brother or my son, and they're becoming successful because you showed gratitude. Th- that's going to come back to you. That's going to come back to you 10 times. Not, but that's because you're not doing it for that. You're doing it because you truly care. Yeah. I'm trying to have them have great lives. And Boom. They, yeah. And I hopefully I teach them that. They, they do that. They pay that forward. Absolutely. Well, you know. That's 100, right? You have It's that trilogy. You know, boom, yeah. pay it forward, pay it forward. So actually, here's a great question right here. Because uh, Karn had a great – Black Ice, what is your best advice for candidates in interviews? And what are three BS commonly held beliefs about resumes? <sighs> Mm. That's a good one. That's actually a good one. I don't know which one you want to tackle first. 
Wow, that's a good one, man. Um, I think I think in the resume, hey, okay, I see a lot of people come out of college and they put their degree as a focus. Mm. And they put it on top. You want to put your degree on the bottom. Don't put hobbies. Okay. Don't put hobbies. Don't put I ski. I'm a karate instructor. I'm a jiu-jitsu master. Chess. That's great. But top G, baby. But, top G. Because remember, your, your resume is a selling point to get you in front of, of the interviewer. Right. Because right? you want to sell yourself. Your resume can't sell yourself. You want just enough. You want no more than two pages. Right. Go to LinkedIn. Look at some profiles. But on your resume, make sure you put the topic on your resume, your summary. Like, I see so many people write these resumes. Like, what the hell do you do? Mm. Are you a ski instructor or engineer, <laughs> right? What the f Do you chase raccoons? Yeah. Like, uh, tai Chi, sir. Mine says senior technical recruiting consultant. Right. That's what mine says. But I own an S Corp. I own a corporation, but I don't put I'm a bounder and all this. I'm trying to find a company to work with. So it's, and then I put summary, what I, what I do, blah, blah, blah. And then I go in a senior technical consultant. I go into the, at the end is where you put your degree if you have one. But don't put your hobbies. So what would they put, work experience or maybe other corporations? Like, how do you, how do you structure? Because obviously, like, there's some, I, I, let's just say he has a degree just to make it easy. Because, like, you know, because okay. there's, that is one thing, too, that I get mad at people. Like, they think that having a degree is, like, I'm, I'm ultimately disqualified. Outside of maybe like a couple of different, a couple of things. If you're a, if you're a, if you're a fucking A list dude, coder, you're fucking in no matter what. Dude, I'm a D student out of high school. I got a one point one point four seven GPA. That's, that's okay, you, you know what that is. Bro. You know what that is. That's let's give him his diploma so he don't come back. Literally, yeah, literally, yeah. literally. So if I could do my my route to college was football, uh, uh, University of Michigan. Yep. I couldn't go. I was a great football player. I couldn't go because my grades sucked. Wow. So I went in the Army. I saw, literally, true story. I saw a predator. I oh said, like, I want to be a Green Beret. I went in the Army. I was like, <laughs> wait, 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 back that, back that up. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a Green Beret because I saw a predator? Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 you, like, did you think of that was the Asian dude that cut his chest open? No, that was the Indian guy. That was the Indian guy, right? The Indian dude. He was Green Beret, I think, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that, that was, was Billy. Beret. Yeah, it was Billy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was Billy. That, right, that was a badass motherfucker, man. Billy, you're not afraid of anyone. He's like, this isn't anyone, man. Major, right? I, I ain't got time to bleed. Right, I ain't got time to bleed. That was Rambo, no, right? No, 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 that was that was the dude, uh, the Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura, the he, 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 he became a senator. He's a senator of a uh, governor, the governor of a state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, and then I started my own company because I saw Jerry Maguire. Yo, these movies, I'm telling you, man. Like I, pe I've been telling people about like one movie you should definitely watch. I don't know if you haven't watched it, Ready Player One. I haven't seen that. That's the movie I want to watch. Yeah. If you understand where the metaverse, like ultimately what's probably going to happen with the metaverse, it's that. Just uh, the, the the love story crap. Ugh, you know, whatever. Don't, don't, don't post. They have to, it's a movie, right? At the end of the day. But like if you actually look at what it is, like, oh, like he's winning, he's winning the game. He takes his coins. He buys something in the metaverse. And then it just delivered to his house. That mm. is legit. Co commercial wise. Look at that movie. That's exactly where we're going to go. Wow! Like right there, that that is like now. There's a like oh, like the world's like a like a wasteland. No, 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 no. It's gonna be somewhere in the middle, not black and white, but somewhere in the middle. It's gonna be it's gonna be not as not that bad, but not that good. It's gonna be somewhere in the middle there. It's it's gonna be survivable, just like all of history. It's always you could like this whole shit. We can't make it. You can make it. You can right, you know right. we're gonna we're, we're gonna make it. You know it's just seeing that they watch Ready Player One. I think that's really one of the big movies. Like I, Steven Spielberg made that movie. It is it is actually a I'm gonna movie. watch it tonight. I, I really See, like I'm that a movie. movie. Guys, I am a walk in Rolodex of movies. I love movies. Oh, take go, go back to that. Uh, oh please please. Sorry. You're, you're interviewing. Look, this is this is critical. People get so nervous, right? You have to act. How do I put this? You okay. This is this is a good example. Do we get? Do we get? No, yeah, keep going. Yeah. Okay. When when you're too available, you're unattractive, mm. right? Mm, right. And so I call it faking the funk. I was good at this, you know. So uh, black ice. Um, so uh, you're out looking for r jobs. Have you been interviewing? Yeah, I have three other companies that I'm interviewing with. And I got three other uh, uh, interviews lined up, and other companies that are thinking about second rounds. Right. Oh shit! Remember, it's all a perception. 
It's all a perception, Seem right? Busy. Like you're busy or you're right? time you're, you're faking the Well, you're lying. You're faking the funk, man. Maybe you're literally, maybe you're interviewing at McDonald's, but you really want a software engineer job. I'm just saying, put it out there. But also make sure you have a list of questions to ask the interviewer. Don't try to worry about selling yourself because they have to sell themselves. Don't be so nervous, right? Ask them some key questions. Say, w w when's your product going to release? You know, how, how much revenue have you generated? Can you talk about that? Talk about this, the, the, the type of coding on the front end or back end that you'd be working on. What's your team like? But people get, so, oh, I'm a great engineer. They try to sell what, themselves. What questions shouldn't they ask? Like, should, should, would it would be too cocky to be like, why should I work here? Or like, is that, yeah, yeah, you yeah. don't want to ask them that because yeah. because every company thinks they're like they hung the fucking moon, right? Yeah, We're yeah. Microsoft. Yeah, you didn't invent shit. You've bought or stolen everything. I'm not that impressed, right? No pun intended, yeah, but it right. is what it is. So Amazon's the same way, you know. But but ask some questions that make them think. Because then they value you more as an individual, right? Because you're caring about like if I were to work on the team, right. how would you use me? How would, how would, would this? Where, where would I be? And or like where can where where are your growth patterns? Do you think like where do you guys think can we can we actually go farther than that? Yeah, yeah. And then talk about it as a we, like yeah, we as we, a team, we, right? We. And then in your resume, keep it simple. But like you can always shoot a message. Uh, go to, go to LinkedIn, right? Yeah. Check out some of the people's resumes or their 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 business card if you will right. and then look at resumes online because sometimes they post them right so beautiful and then and then the last part of it is like what three bs commonly held beliefs about resume i think we answered that so yeah thank, thank you so much uh yeah don't don't put your don't put your degree on top of your resume yep you don't need your full address on there but you put the city and oh this this irks me this irks me recruiters hate it when you don't put your phone number on there Real they hate it when you, they hate it when you use Hotmail. Look, if you put a Hotmail address, you're already too old. If you put AOL, you're you're in the you're in the dirt. You're in the grave. Well, Don't put a freaking yeah. Gmail phone number, Google phone number. I will literally, if I swear to God, if I see a resume, big sauce right here, you guys. Uh, listen, if up. you if if you have put your Gmail, don't. Dude, don't have like crazy psycho chick 101 at gmail.com. Just put you know Stephen Smith Jr. 123 whatever. At Gmail, but so, so you're telling me Pussy Slayer five three one is not no. The, but bro, you got it. You got it. You got it. You got to put your phone number. You have to. You're looking for a job. You don't have a phone number, man. But it's, bro, I'm supposed to stay on the internet. I'm supposed to be like out. I'm, I'm, they're not supposed to know what I'm at, man. Look, guess what? Keep keep your keep them guessing. Guess what? What? It's the future. You can have two phone numbers on one phone now. Are you telling me? I I two phone numbers. Two. One, one for the hoes and one for the bros, right? <laughs> no. This is you have your SSD, your phone number the, yeah, to yeah. your phone and yeah. your SIM card. So I got two phone numbers on this phone. Right. Right? I'm 53. I figured it out. You guys just No, to no, no, I'm, no, 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 no. I'm I'm I'm, I'm in my 20s right now. I I this, this phone shit's hard, bro. But, I, but, I, you, but but I have my 702 number. Yeah. And I have my 206 the Seattle number that I've had for 15 years. Right. But I got a new one. It's like, "Oh, you know, hey, like, okay, we're doing some coaching. Here's my 702." Yeah. Are you are you with me? I'm with you. Okay. Next question. Beautiful, man. Sheesh. Victoria was like, how dope was Predator when you were ten, like 10? 10. 10? Shit, I was fucking... I, when did that movie I, come out? I was like 18, he, 17 years old, man. It was 80s for sure. Yeah. I graduated high school in 88. I, I mean, he 87. Be, it came out in 87. He, he probably was saying himself, probably. That was, that was one of my favorite movies, Predator, of all time. Aliens and Predator. Hands down. Definitely, man. And uh, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. Hexy, Hexy said... Uh, Bottom of the market till now. Fill your bags. You'll be wealthy in the future. Yeah, you make some def. There, there, there's not now. I will say this. So even with crypto, right? Cryptos is pa crypto and investments and stuff. Even real estate and stuff. It's 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 passive income. As passive as passive can get. So what that means is there still is some work and some. There's there's a burn to performance, like Rolo talks about and stuff. Where you have to keep up with it. Like I I, I have people that like oh I bought some crypto and I nine months later I haven't I haven't been paying attention what's going on. That's a recipe for disaster like you you should be once a week just look you don't have to be on top of it but it's like once a week looking like look a little into it and maybe one even i would be have more like every couple like if, if it was every other week you were paying attention you would like you would you wouldn't fall for pitfalls that's what happens to me is like they buy crypto and they like they blink they like stop paying attention to it. nine six months later they're like why am i why is my coin down 70 percent? well bro everyone was like we need to get out of this or like the, something changed. And that's, that's the problem. It's just paying a little attention to it. Just like when you have a business, like once you get to a, a real estate business big enough and stuff, you have people, caretakers of it and that are taking care of it. You have a middle company and stuff that's renting it out for you, but you still have to somewhat 
check it out once in a while, make sure right. the repairs are. Be- there is still some due diligence you have to be doing here and there. It's not like full time work, but there's like you have to sacrifice a couple days a month, in even in a real estate business wow. or in this. You have there. There's no the, this. There's this whole thing of like pat like. I can make my whole business very passive, but regardless or not, I still would be like a couple, a couple hours, three, four hours a day. I'm like, compare that to like when you're working full time, you're like working 12, 11, 10 hours in a business versus like three hours a, a, a day. Like you tell anyone that's like, oh yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just working three hours a day. And so they're like, you lucky son of like, but that's still not zero. Right. You, there's still this level of, you have to maintain it. Yeah, and I, I mean, I mean the, even on their YouTube and Instagram and, and TikTok. Right. I spend I spend every day working on that. I spend every day on uploading videos, but right. I also have my business, right? Yeah. So I'm working. I'm working even through the holidays. I was grinding away. We both were, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. By I- the way, Predator came out in '87. I was a junior in high school, going to senior in high school. What a great movie! And I was like, I'm gonna be a Green Beret. <laughs> I think the best movie I watched in high school, like, would probably be like I think I watched the Quint- the Quentin Tarantino movies, like Death Proof. And like, oh yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. The, the, uh, Reservoir Dogs. No, not the Reservoir. Well, no, I was. Um, no, it was. Well, I watched Pulp Fiction. Reservoir. Actually, I haven't seen that movie. You haven't seen Reservoir Dogs. I, I, I haven't seen. I've seen every movie but that one, bro. I seriously, I swear to you, bro. Are, have you guys seen Reservoir Dogs? You're fired. I haven't seen Reservoir oh, Dogs. Oh my god. Have you seen Reservoir Dogs? Mr. P- no, no. But I, I, hey, wait, ask I, your, I, ask your, ask you on the super on the super chat. Yeah. Has anybody seen Reservoir Dogs? Have you guys seen this movie? Why do, been, I, why do I got to be Mr. Pink? I know. <laughs> I, it's been on my list, dude. Like, I mean, I've, seen, like, I've seen every other movie besides Steve Buscemi? That yeah, dude. It's just like... Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I've seen the Blues Brothers and all that crap. Oh. crap but, like, come on. But I haven't seen it. Like, it's okay, just, okay. Everybody's listening to this super but I'm being, chat. I, yeah, okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Two movies. I, I told these guys, and they haven't seen it. Vince Vaughn was in a movie called Swingers. Swing Dancing? Yeah, yeah, swing, 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 that's swing, where he was discovered. Have you seen Swingers? I've seen Swingers. Have you seen Swingers? No, sir. God, what And And... And this Reservoir Dogs, I need to, I need to check it out. Yeah, I need, it's been on my list for. It's, but if you don't like blood, don't see Reservoir Dogs. Oh no, no I'm, I'm all about the okay. blood. Yeah, right. I'm all about the blood. All right, all right. Yeah, it's Man, been a while. You guys so, are but, killing me. I mean, the first. I mean, the first movie. I still remember, like as a kid, the first really movie I was. I was like the trilogy or whatever the hell was like. I watched the Harry Potter movies when they first came out and stuff like when I was. But I was very young at the time. Right. Know? But it's like. I, Man, I, you're you're scaring me. You probably had Thomas the Train too. Oh, if, dun, dun, dun. dude, I I, I, <laughs> yo, I did have. My Thomas son, the, hey, when you see when blues, you see, hey when you guys blues. hey hey when you see when you see Trey, ask him about Thomas the Train. He was spastastic about that shit as a kid. He had a one with a battery. Dude, that kid was obsessed with Thomas the Train. Say Trey, how do you like Thomas the Train? How do you like what, Sodor? Just give him a hard what, time when he comes to the you, studio. I can do what, that. What you guys know about Blues Clues? Oh my God, Blues Clues, what and you, oh, we're going down the. Oh boy! When will you learn? This is Mickey's Playhouse. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, I think we peaked already. Now. That's <laughs> wow! <laughs> Lay off the Red Bull. <laughs> I used to be able to do Woody Woodpecker, but I can't anymore. No, it's, it's, no, I'm no. done, bro. My voice no, no, is gone. No, no, I can't no. do that one. But you shout, shout out to the original OG Power Rangers, man. The original See? Dragon Ball Z. This yes. violence. This is why Brawly. I on never my watched that. Brawly. I never the, watched it. Look at that. Brawly's still on the computer. I'm a right Foghorn Leghorn guy. Okay. <laughs> I said, "Boy, he doing all wrong, son. Watch me. Watch what. Watch how I do it. Watch this world." <laughs> Foghorn Leghorn. You don't know who he is? I've lost, though. Oh, my God. You guys don't know who the rooster is. Foghorn Leghorn. Nope. Oh, my God. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. wait, wait the rooster. The rooster. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm never, a chicken. I, I, I yeah. eat chicken. Yeah, what, I've never. Get away from never, me, son. Watch I, me how it's done. Yeah, I've never. Oh, Yo, he always sounded like Bernie Mac to me always. <laughs> I'm not afraid of you, motherfuckers. Yeah, Gala Gala Island. Yeah, but it's, dude, tr- like, bro, like. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but like the original Dragon, Dragon Ball Z when it came out in America, like before. There Never was, watched it. There, there is, it's, it's like Christ. It's before and after Dragon Ball Z. There is no, because the level of violence, it was incredible. Like just were out these jacked ass motherfuckers that are like half white, half Asian. Basically, that's what they were, really look like. Just beating What's the wrong shit with? out of hey, each other. Next time, I look deep a, into Kyle's eyes when I Don't bring him a too. Red Bull, bro. <laughs> don't bring him a Red Bull. What's wrong with this guy? He's on planet nine. Yeah. Like it was insane. Godzilla was tied too, but um, but it was it was insane. It was just like it, it like that like red pilled anime into all of America and stuff like that. It was probably one of the best things like Japan's ever imported over here ever. And the crazy shit about it is the first place I ever saw was Mexico, not Japan. I I, I went on vacation in Japan, I mean, of, in he, Mexico, and they were playing it on like this. Is how based it was. They were, they were they needed cartoons, and basically there was this whole thing like uh, Mexico was trying to get deals with 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 Japan. 
I'm just being serious he's, right now. He's not stopped. The Red Bull kicked in. The Red Bull kicked. Yo, <laughs> do, don't get me. Do you, know what, do you know what got me excited? What? Fucking He-Man, Skeletor, and Scooby Doo. That's oh, that what cool. I watched. That was cool. Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. You guys don't know nothing about that. No, I, I know I, the Cylons. Exactly. Voltron. No, that's that's old. That's that's, that's, yeah, that's yeah, younger. That's younger. Yeah. Oh, Voltron was older. Yeah, that's true. That's right. Yeah. yeah like those. I'm, I'm mostly. Yeah, I'm, I'm 90s, so it's like yeah, I'm 91. So. Yeah. I know all that other stuff, but time for another two hours. I was shooting, no. I was shooting, <laughs> I was shooting people in Colombia in the military back then. Damn, that's how old I am. Wait, what? Oh, oh, uh, 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 different topic. Different topic. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, man, where can people find you, man? Uh, Black Ice Reality check on YouTube, and then Black and White Best of Both on Instagram. It's right there. There it is. Right there. Wait, where is it? Right, right there. Oh, it disappeared. Okay. There we go. Black there Ice. And also, if you click on the title, it's blue. It will take you directly to his YouTube channel. I got all his links below. Follow. Do you have a Twitter? I do, man. But, dude, I'm on there. Like, what am I talking about? Just Every time I get on Twitter, I get pissed off. Just I see throw, a bunch of throw, woke just, shit. Just throw it. Just, just put some fucking, like, just put some, like, I don't know, some... Um, feminist, anti-feminist memes, and you're good. That's all you got to post. I did, man. I once, got a, once a day. That's yeah, it. yeah, I did. No, but seriously, if you go to my, what is it? Uh, if you go to my uh, Instagram, Instagram. Uh, wait, all below, you guys. Look, look so, at the so box. Black Ice Reality is my Twitter. Black right. Ice Reality, but Black Ice Reality check is my YouTube. And then I'm on I'm on TikTok. Too. I got the TikTok in there too. Even though I'm yeah, against yeah, yeah. TikTok, um, I know, I know, I know. I, hey, they, they're trying to get rid of it. I heard. So. I, I think they're gonna. I think it's gonna pass. I think it's gonna be a big thing in the election. That they're gonna, really? Yeah, I think TikTok's out of here, bros. They don't, here. TikTok doesn't like me. They give me warnings. Then all the time. fuck them anyway. Then they always give me warnings. They always give me warnings, and I have to dispute it. And I get approved. And they say, yeah. okay, you're fine. Yeah, it's. I crazy. talked about somebody's mouse. They got mad. <laughs> I don't know. Well, anyway, you guys, you can follow me at Dollar Cost Crypto. If you're watching, why don't you subscribe and join the Citadel? You guys, all the links are below. And I will be back Saturday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I will be... I'm waiting for a guest. I might, I'm going to have a boxer. If, if for some reason it's wow. not that, I'm going to have a hex stream on Saturday wow. and stuff like that. So we're going to... Yeah, I'm... I'm O'Day, we're gonna get O'Day in here too and stuff. So I've got a lot, we got a lot of professional fighters and stuff like that, that I know of, and so they're all having fights this month. I think he's having a fight on not O'Day. Uh, I think O'Day's on the twenty eighth, but um, but what's his name? I don't want to say his name right now, but like basically he's having a fight on the eighteenth and stuff. He's having it in Los Angeles. Wow. Yeah. So he he was like uh, funny enough, uh, funny enough and stuff. He was he actually took like Kylie Jenner to prom. <laughs> What? Yeah, he took Kylie Jenner to prom and stuff like that, and then like now he's like oh, he's been boxing. He he was actually in our hex event. Um, um, he oh was, wow! He was, so I, I so for people who don't know, I threw in uh, me, Charlie, and some Hexicans. We all threw together money in order to like just you know, a community pot. You know, right. like nothing. We we basically threw in a giant uh, boxing fight, and um, all the hex people won and stuff like that. We, we threw it in the, the showboat at um, Atlantic City. Oh, okay, and that's why I had time to. I wasn't. Why, that's why I went to Jersey for a bit, and then that's why. I flew that's up. right, because you called me from Jersey. Yeah, I called you from Jersey, and then I was like, I'm, and then I was like, man, I don't, man, this place is. I don't know if it's me. I mean, there was at least some gambling here, and then I went to New York and had the worst time ever. Like, yeah, what was wrong with New York? It's a shithole. Really, it's just bad, dude. It's like all. It's never. Well, I just. I've got nothing good to say about New York that much. Like it's really. It's like I got. I almost got into a fight with two homeless men. Literally, <laughs> I, I legitimately like legitimately almost got into a fight with a homeless man. It's because he had too much Red Bull. <laughs> Bro, I, like I just want. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm in the most. I'm in the most like pleb place ever. I'm in. I'm in a gift store. Like my girl. My Mortal girl. Combat my, fight. My girl's like getting like getting like you know knickknacks and shit for the family or whatever. Dude, and then I, and then I was like, I can't get a cell phone reception because I'm talking to Sterling because like I mean I'm always working always like so I'm just like we're walking having fun and then I'm just like oh like they're frying rats on a fucking thing right there and then I was like I can't they get are. a phone I can't yeah well they're, it looks like you know street meat you know whatever it is yeah no you didn't see the video today they're actually doing it they got rats what yes. Bro, 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 what? I man, okay. Oh my god. Uh, well, keep going. I'm sorry. I don't yeah. want to interrupt you. But um, now there's really good people in New York. But it's like you guys need to escape, man. Now escape to other parts of the United States. But like, um, li- really, it's just too cold, bro. These fuck all this cold stuff. And like, I feel like you can't really be productive year round with that much cold. Like, you lose productivity. You right. Need, you need to be somewhere like like there's a reason Florida's doing so well. Like, I'm not saying you have to move to Florida, but like I'm, I'm telling you, there's places you can go to where like the weather is just like consistent year round like there's only been one month here even in vegas, even vegas i mean we had a cold snap for the first time like in a long time we it was like kind of record cold even for las vegas or and all over the united states bro what that's in new york right now 
are they eating rotisserie rats in New York? Man, you know, <laughs> throw the city away, you guys. Let's, like, there's, there's another thing, too. Like, I, there's been too many movies with New York getting destroyed in movies. Like, what, what the fuck? Are, like, everyone's like, let's move to New York. What? So whenever a war pops off, you're dead instantly? Yeah. That, what what I, are we talking about here? That, like, yeah. 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 Anyway, you guys, catch you guys on the flip side, man. Thank you. Black guys, thank you so much. I'll have right you back on, right on in a bro. few weeks, man. Right on, bro. Thank you. All right.